you. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, June 15th, 2021 at 11 a.m. And this is the webinar of the Streets, Traffic and Refuse Committee meeting. Um, the meeting is called to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Vaquero. Present. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Bosley. Present. Alderman Morton. Present. Whoever has that phone, can you turn it down, please? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm in the office. That's my work phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alderman Schweitzer. Present. Alderman Peel. Here. Chairwoman Tyus. Present. Eight present, you have quorum. Thank you. Um, the meeting is now, uh, we have a quorum and I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of January 27th, 2021. I wanna say, um, let's see if we have Alderman Bo Boyd, Alderwoman Boyd and Alderwoman Martin were all on the committee. So we're gonna take your lead and making sure, telling us that these uh, minutes are correct, because none of us can really know if they are correct or, right, li or not. So for the uh, previous chair, uh, are, will you do a motion to uh, to approve the minutes of January 27th, 2021? Madam Chairwoman, I move to adopt the minutes dated January 22nd, 2021. I'll second that. Is it the 22nd, not the 27th? Oh. 27th. I thought you said 22nd. 27th. 27th. I, I move to adopt the meeting's uh, minutes dated January 27th, 2021. And I'll second that still. We have a motion and a second. Um, Alderman, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Vaquero. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Bosley. Aye. Alderman Morton. Aye. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Seven. Chairwoman Tyus. Aye. Seven eyes looked at them. And one voted present. Okay. Um, by your vote, you approve the minutes of January 27th, 2021. Um, now we come to board bills for review. Um, normally what I do in committee is that the people who are members, I do their board bills last unless some, one of the members say they have to leave. That way we keep a quorum, we get our business done in an expeditious manner. Um, so uh, if you got it, so um, uh, Alderman Martin, you're on the committee. So we're gonna go down to the next board bill. Um, Alderman um, Oldenburg, which is board bill number 33. Alderman Oldenburg, I did get your uh, correspondence. That's a faux pas you did. I'm gonna respond in writing quietly. Don't ever do that again, okay? That's all I'm gonna say, and then I'll send it. The chair makes the decision of the order, okay? So I don't think you meant anything, but let's do, I, I'll, I'll reply to you um, in your, an email. But you are the first person up that is not on the committee. And so we have board bill number 33. We also have a rule now that we have to have hearings, public uh, hearings for anybody who wants to speak. Um, and so uh, uh, did each of you all get the guidelines for the public hearing and public input? Are you familiar with it at all? Yes, I, I uh, received it. Okay. Did, is there anybody that didn't receive it because the clerk sent over the guideline and basically, you know, we checked, did a rule change. And so we uh, let the speaker speak and I can, when we bring up a board bill after the, uh, what I do is after the, uh, the, uh, the older person presents their board bill, then uh, we let the people uh, who want to speak either for or against it. And we each should have a list uh, of who wants to speak in favor or against it. And I don't think, let me see, speaking in favor I think on this board bill, everybody here is for it. So we, we don't have any people that signed up against it, but I would let he, uh, the, the older person present their board bill. And then after that, I will listen to speakers. Um, and if uh, uh, members have a question, if you will raise your hand, you, you can have a few minutes to ask the speakers. I wanna know, to let you know that speakers are given three minutes 
uh, and not to exceed five minutes. I probably don't expect that to be that long, but um, that's why I'm limiting how many board bills we put on the streets committee because I don't want us to be going for four and five hours. Um, so we'll test this and see how this works because it will always be unsure um, depending on how many board bills and how many people uh, sign up, what's going to be the length of your committee. Um, so is there anybody on the committee that has any questions about it before we get started? All righty. Uh, Alderman. Uh, sorry. Alder. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, if, you, if you use your raise, are, are you someplace you can press the raise hand? Because I'm looking up there because it goes up to the front. But if you can't, that's okay. Okay, yeah, I finally got where I can, I'm stable now. Okay. <laughs> All right, where did you, okay. Yes, you had a question? All the yes, ma'am. The question that I had is, so when we present with the new rules, when we present a bill and we need to uh, notify the public so they can have pros and cons in regards to the bill so they're allowed to speak, correct? And the clerk does that. I think they do a posting, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Okay. Right. Okay, right. I just want to make sure I was on point. I'm just right. trying to get in my head. Okay. And then in the posting, it tells them that they have to a certain amount of time to sign up and give their email, and then we send them a link. And then uh, the uh, clerk sent, gives uh, for sure the, uh, the chair, and I don't know if he sent all of you all the listing of the public speakers, but he did send me as the chair. So then we, uh, as the chair, you would know who the speakers are for each board bill, for okay. or against. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, concerns? All righty, we will get uh, we will get to the business before us. Board bill number thirty three, um, Madam Clerk, would you? Uh, I used to do this, but I'm going to ask you to read the little introduction about the uh, board bill. Are you here still? Thank you. I'm muted. Give me just a second. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. After the presentation of a bill at any public hearing, those identified as proponents and opponents. I'm sorry, not that. What I want you to read is the introduction to board bill number 33. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. Board bill 33 sponsored by Alderman Oldenburg, an ordinance establishing 5700 Wall Street Residential Parking District and location and restriction for curb parking within the 5700 block of Wall Street Residential Parking, authorizing the placement of permit parking only signs and prohibiting the parking of any vehicle which does not display the required permit and providing a penalty for violation and containing an emergency clause. Alderman Old Old Oldenburg can't talk this morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the committee, appreciate your time. Uh, as the clerk indicated, the board bill before you uh, will establish a residential parking district. Um, we have uh, quite a number of these throughout the city, um, and I'm not sure what the rate of their growth are, but I do know that there, there's coordination between the traffic commissioner, the director of streets, and establishing these um, and establishing them as local ordinance. What we have in the 5700 block of Walsh is a bit of a unique situation that we believe warrants residential parking zone. Um, for starters, it's one of the shortest blocks in the neighborhood uh, that's flanked by both Hampton and Weary Avenue. Additionally, it has um, a half a dozen handicapped uh, residents that live there. So there is already some, some um, uh, limited or um, what we could call prohibition to parking as a result of the handicapped residents that need those spaces cleared. Uh, and finally, the, the final reason, the third and final reason uh, that we believe this is warranted, uh, let me back up, there's four reasons. The third reason would be that the, the residents uh, sought a petition uh, and over 40 uh, residents have signed this and there's probably an excess of close to um, 55 or 60 residents that, that are all in support of this. And the fourth and final reason is that there is busy businesses 
uh, flanked along Hampton, uh, both at Walsh and Delore, but particularly the, the restaurant that's located at uh, Walsh and Hampton is a, a very popular Mexican restaurant and it has very limited off-street parking. Uh, so in it, in it times with its patio in full swing, there's probably nearly 200 occupancy uh, restaurants. So a lot of tabletops um, and a lot of busyness, which is good. I think from an urban planning perspective, we all know that um, density and, and um, congestion can't be favorable. Uh, but we, we seek to utilize this tool because there have been uh, a plethora of negative impacts and quality of life associated with with parking and some of the other concerns that come uh, with with just you know an abundance of patrons um, at this restaurant. So we've we also have talked to the restaurant owner and the patron owner. Uh, they of course uh, want to be a good neighbor and they don't they don't seem to to refuse that this for their patrons um, and they want safety as well. I think that's the the last. Uh, you know, upshot here too, is that we believe this will create a safer environment for uh, a lot of the congestion. Um, I don't think I have to uh, provide too many examples of, it's great that folks from Chesterfield, Crestwood, and even the Metro East wanna come over to a, a popular restaurant in South St. Louis, uh, but they're not often familiar with one-way streets. They're not often familiar with um, what I would call maybe an, an acumen or a, um, a decorum that's associated with urban parking. So going down the street the wrong way and creating really an unsafe environment. So we believe if we can regulate this with the residential parking zone, it'll be good for the residents, it'll be good for the patrons. So uh, with that, I'll end and ask for your favorable consideration. Madam Chair, I do wanna end by saying, I, I apologize, I meant no disrespect in, in not giving you deference to the order of the committee selection. That's uh, mea culpa and shame on me for that. I, I will. Um, um, duly noted. Uh, I don't know, Madam Chair, if you want me to entertain questions from the committee members or you want to go right to questions. I'm, so. I'm going to get right to that. I'm real good at running my committees. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to start to uh, say, uh, I feel like I'm dealing with my husband now, but I'm not going to say that out loud, okay? Because that's politically incorrect, okay? So, because <laughs> he likes to run things too. But, uh, okay, yes, uh, I was going to ask the chair before we get started with the people uh, who are speaking in favor of this. Uh, I'm going to go down the line. Alderman Boyd, do you have any questions of the sponsor? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Vaccaro, I, I think you told me you had like 20 questions for, for the sponsor. 20? No, I had 60. Well, one <laughs> question with 60 parts. No, I thank you. I have no questions. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Alderman Boyd, any questions of the sponsor? No, ma'am, I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman Martin, any questions of the sponsor? No questions. Thank you. I no just, thank as you. someone who frequents that, frequent that area, I think that area, I think it's a pretty, pretty, pretty good idea. Pretty good idea. I want to forget, I want to forget, ask for, I want to ask for forgiveness for our vice chair. Uh, Alderman Bosley, I didn't see, did you? <laughs> okay, you gone again. All right. When you, do you have any questions of the sponsor? No, ma'am. No, I, I am here. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank I just, you. I don't want to be irresponsible driving and having me on video. I don't want you to either. I don't so want you to either. Attention, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Woman, Swice, Alderman Swicer. Uh, Swicer. Any questions of the sponsor? Hi, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my only question is if there's any concern about the, you know, if the one block is it has a residential permit what happens with parking moving to other blocks? Do you think this might be something that will expand or? No, it's a good question. Alderwoman, thank you for it. Uh, we, both myself and the residents have thought through this along with the, the director of streets. I think given that the business's location is, is there and there's also a whole half city block before the next street uh, north, um, and there's ample parking on Hampton and we think this will encourage more folks to park along Hampton Avenue um, as a result of that. What, what I would say to folks that say, okay, well now the 5,700 block of Walsh has it, uh, now there's congestion on others. I'm not sure that's going to entirely be the, the case. Um, and because of the restaurant's precise location right there at, at Walsh and Hampton. So we think by isolating it to the, to the residential parking only on Walsh, 
we don't expect to see, um, you know, the, everyone who parked on Walsh to all of a sudden park on Delore. Uh, we believe that it'll sort of the, create a, a disbursement along Hampton Avenue. But that was something that we had to give some consideration to. So certainly a good question. Thank you, that's another question. Okay, Alder Phil, do you have any questions for the sponsor? Uh, no, I don't. I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, I support uh, this bill. I understand regarding uh, in my district, in my ward, we have similar issues. So I'm glad that you are supporting your ward and your citizens. Thank you, Alder. Um, I do have a question um, of the sponsor. You said something about a petition. Um, I normally am a very big proponent that you give the streets committee your petition and or maps. OK, so I didn't tell you that before. Uh, but did you submit it to you? It, was the petition just submitted to you or did it go to any of the uh, street uh, street people or anything like that? Yes, ma'am. It was submitted to me by the residents and I, I gave it to the clerk and I believe it's in the, the, the folder. Uh, for everyone. There should be the petition in there as long as a map. Okay, I missed that because I went online and printed out stuff. So, okay, that's fine. All righty. Uh, did you have anything else you want to present before the committee before I start to uh, uh, let the uh, people who showed up to speak in favor of this? I do not, Chairwoman. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, our first speaker in favor of board bill number th 33 is Susan Nowak. Am I saying that correctly? Uh, yes, you are. Thank you so much for appearing. It's always great when citizens come to especially testify for something because sometimes they are not happy, but so the aldermen always love it when they have people who are coming to support their decisions. So uh, you have uh, three minutes. M Madam Clerk, can you watch the time? And, and if you need a little bit more, of course, I'll give you that, okay? Okay, thank you Point so much. Order, Madam Chair. Sure. Madam oh, Chair. I, they, she, I'm sorry, she needs to say her name and go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, Susan Nowak. Wait a minute. He, he has the floor. Yes, sir. Um, you know, our new rule, we are required to swear in people oh, who are testifying. Uh, <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, before you could just uh, speak, so now you have to be sworn in. Um, so if you would raise your right hand, do you swear or do you swear or do you want to affirm? Um, I'll swear. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cause I wasn't going to do that one. Okay. So I, I, I need all the help I can get. Um, and so would you say your name um, for the committee, please? Susan Nowak. Okay. And are you a 16th ward resident? Yes, I am. All right, go ahead. So I, well, first of all, I want to just say that I do appreciate the support that I've heard already for this bill. Um, especially the support of our aldermen. And um, it is, it has, and I love living in the 16th ward, I'll tell you that, and I'm not going anywhere. Um, as far as residential parking, it seems to, uh, it, it has become an issue since the 200 plus patron capacity restaurant was established about two and a half years ago. And um, as the restaurant has gained popularity, the, re the parking for the residents, those, well, everyone, but especially those that do go to work and need to return home from work sometime after 4 p.m., I, I literally cannot park. Um, if I didn't have an alley that I could at least put my car in that doesn't help my other family members, but I can put one car temporarily in the alley, I would not be able to come home from work. The, I, again, I'm glad the restaurant is popular. I'm thrilled to see the business in the neighborhood. I'm not trying to be a detriment to them at all. Um, I think that it was a little bit of poor planning the only negative thing I'll say about them is it was poor planning to have a 200 person capacity with six parking spots. I'll help them as much as I can, but I have to, I do have to come home at the end of the day. <laughs> so, and park, and I don't think that's unreasonable. We did ask them about two years ago when we saw that their employees were parking in front of our homes. We did ask the owner to please 
please ask, you know, could you have your employees park somewhere else? There is Hampton. There is an empty lot directly across that's vacant. Um, and I will say that the, the owner did that. However, again, there's employees parking. I think he for, forgets to remind them. And those employees literally are there from 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. In, our, in front of our homes because the owner forgets to remind them or to tell the new employees. So again, that's all I have to say. I just want to be able to go and do a hard day's work and return to my home. <laughs> that's all I'm asking for. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a question. How, how long has the restaurant been there? Yeah, like two and a half years. So this was uh, someone from zoning allowed this to happen? In, uh, is that what happened? I won't go into detail, but what we what the neighborhood signed for was uh, about a 12 table American restaurant. That's what we agreed to. And I did sign that petition and that is not what we got. But okay. I guess that has to be water under the bridge. But somebody pulled a fast one on us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sometimes zoning doesn't hear what people are saying. Are there, uh, let's start, Alderman Boyd, do you have any questions of the speaker? No questions, thank you, Madam Chair. Alderman Vaccaro, any questions of the speaker? Yes, um, my question would be, <clears throat> if they signed a conditional use hearing, for 12 tables, why not hold them to that? The only, the only problem I have with these, I have churches, schools, restaurants along Watson uh, that have been asking for the same thing. You know, like pick up from school over at Mellencott School becomes an issue. They don't want residential parking. And then when you go along Watson, you have Biggies and you have Trattery and Marsala and uh, you know, that bar over there, it, you know, and then the Mexican restaurant. Alderman, can uh, we stick oh, to this issue? Uh, please, 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 because uh, the well, Alderman has this to is, go. This is, <laughs> this is, right, this is the same issue. I know, you, you're and, talking about, though, you have the same problem, but but what I'm saying, we're speaking to the 16th ward. We're, we're going to uh, look for you to, to show some leadership in the 23rd ward, okay? Hello? 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 Oh, it kicked me out for a second. It was. I'm just saying that once you start, you better be ready to these things everywhere. It can, but can we say you remarks? Know, if you have a question, good. what I'm saying, excuse me, uh, if you have a question of this person, please, and we'll do remarks at the end so we can move along oh, with no, speakers, if you no. don't mind. Oh, 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 yeah, no, no questions. Okay, thank you. No questions. Um, Alder, Alder, woman Boyd, any questions? No, ma'am, no questions. Okay, uh, Alderman uh, Bosley, any questions? Alderman Bosley. Questions. No questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Alderwoman Martin, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Alderwoman Swicer, any questions? No questions. Thanks. Alderwoman Phil, any questions? I have one question, and the question is what are the hours for this residential parking? Is it 24 7 or a certain? Great question. Um, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Are Go you ahead. asking, ma'am, are you asking me? Yes. Um, we would be asking for 24 seven because just because the restaurant is open seven days a week from 1030 AM until 11 PM some nights. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great question. Okay, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Nowak, I appreciate it. And I do really understand. Uh, at one point there were four churches that were all around my house and you actually were scared to leave your house because <laughs> on Sundays, because when you came back, there was no place to, to park. So I really do understand. And I thank you for coming to testify. Thank you. Um, the next uh, person we have is Casey Zona, Z-O-N-A. I see a Nick. But is there a Casey? Or was it supposed to be Nick? Madam Chair, I think uh, 
uh, Casey was uh, uh, setting up the call for Mildred Bell, okay. uh, one of our older uh, neighbors okay. that did okay. not have uh, access uh, to the internet, but I, I'm sure she helped with that. Okay, um, is, is are they on board someplace? Yeah, Mildred, are you in. on? Yes, yes I am. Yes. Mildred. Okay, great. Okay. I'm going to talk fast because I want to make sure I get everything I've written down. I'm going to give you all the time you want. My next door neighbor is 101 July the 1st, so I'm breaking all the rules for you. Honey, I'll be 93 in July. Very good. And I am capable of staying living by myself and taking care of myself and doing my neighbor myself. lives by herself. So I, I salute you. I have a disabled side and I'm very concerned about it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, our neighborhood was has taken a real hit these last two years. It seems the residents are no longer taken seriously, and the Southampton Association has been active since I have lived there. And we have uh, done our best to keep our neighborhood a desirable place to live. Now it's a struggle to feel like we're appreciated. And we have to be kind, we have to be at the same time brass and loud <laughs> to have our voice heard. And we want our hurt voice heard and taken seriously. We've asked for respect and peace again. The parking is a serious solution. People park in handicap, and I'm one of those. And I've been cursed out because of that, even if I'm j just nice and tell them they can't park there. I have a permit and they don't read. Um, and we are forced to call the police and they have enough to do. I feel like they have enough to do. We don't need to have to call them all the time. And I consider that everybody is responsible for their self. But again, we can't run backwards. That's the way they're brought up. They don't know any differently. And they have enough to, the police have enough to do. We can't put down cones and get there. We tried that, but now we can't put down cones. The um, the uh, curb across by Katrina has a, a, a yellow. And, and you'd think that people would know you can't park where a yellow curb is, but no, they park there, plus the employees park there. So um, I'm gonna find my place again. I'm sorry. Um, Take your time, ma'am. Okay, I just wanna get, get it all in. And the, they were taken away, but now they're back again. And I would love to put a cone down when I leave just so I can come back and know I'm, I'm sure that I'll have a place. I have a sister that's sick and I go out there a lot. If I stayed over my limit of time out there, then there, there's no way my place is going to be available because everybody can't read, you know? And so um, people were parking there all the time with my cones. And then I asked, the, uh, I think this is police, I asked if they could, if I could put the cone down. No, we can't put the cone down. So they're in the back of my car. But we have no solution to keep keep uh, our, our place uh, open. So we are vulnerable. I, uh, I have, I've been, I'm going to find my place again, okay? Yes, ma'am, take your time. Okay. We're gonna to listen to you, take You'll your time. Someday. We have wrong way drivers, I mean wrong way drivers, and they speed down the street. I'm not kidding. I saw a fellow go way down there. I mean, it was amazing. And if there'd been a child out there, it'd just been too bad. And so it's speeding. And then another thing, they back down fast too, down to where they've seen a place and there's, they get up there and they see the cones or they see my parking place or they see whatever and they can't park. So they zoom back down the street again. And so anyhow, and then we have our, this barrier at the end of our street, which is just a bottleneck attraction. They pile up down there and they go into the station and they circle around and they circle around even in the street to get where they want to go. And I would appreciate um, giving us your ear, really listening to our situation. It's just not for us, but it's for every human being out there on, on Hampton Avenue. They zoom down there to going so fast. And so residents are important, not just businesses who do not want to be uh, congenial with the residents 
and we bend their ear, but I mean, I don't make a habit of it. I don't want to be a brass old lady and I'm not going to yell and scream, but I am going to talk when I have a chance to stand up for our neighborhood. So it says, you know, that even a child's known by his doings. So how do we want to be labeled? Think about it. That's it. Miss Bell, I appreciate it. Thank you. We are listening and we, we hear you and I appreciate you coming out to speak. Um, does uh, Alderman Boyd, you have any questions of the speaker? No, Madam Chair, thanks. Uh, Alderman Bacaro, any questions of the speaker? No, not at all. Okay, uh, Alderman Boyd, any questions of the speaker? I don't have questions, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Bosley, any questions of the speaker? Okay. Uh, Alderwoman uh, Martin, any Alderman questions of the Martin, speaker? Any questions of the speaker? No, thank you. No, thank you. Alderwoman Schweitzer, any Alderman questions Schweitzer, of the speaker? Any questions of the speaker? No, thank you. No, thank you. Alderwoman Phil, any Alderman questions of the speaker? Phil, any questions of the speaker? No, thank you. No, okay. thank you. And okay. thank you again, Mrs. Bell. Thank you did a great Mrs. job. Bell, you did a great and, job. I, and I do hear you, and, and I understand. And I, do hear you and I understand. And I think the committee members do. And I also. think the committee members do also. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. You did a great job. Okay, the great next, job. The next person okay, we have next, is Nick. The next person Sona. we have is Nick Sona. Madam Chair, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on just a second. Um, I'm so sorry. I did not swear this uh, person in, Mrs. Uh, Bell. So I have to go back and do a little swearing in. We're going to do it. Do you swear the testimony you gave is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I need you to unmute. Do you swear the testimony you just gave the committee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I forgot to do that. Okay. Okay. Now, Mr. Zona, I'm going to get it right this time. Um, would you state your name? <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Zona. And Mr. Nicholas Zona, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth before the uh, streets committee? Yeah, I do. Thank yes. you. You may proceed. Chairman, Speaker, as well as the committee, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Alderman Oldenburg uh, for bringing this up and really fighting for the residents uh, on our behalf. Uh, I came to this, uh, this neighborhood in 2009, and I literally bought my house driving down the street with Walsh before I even got into my house. That's how impressed I was with the neighborhood. Um, in 2021, things are a lot different. You know, uh, Mr. Oldenburg heard our concerns about wrong way drivers. So I want to give him uh, the respect and give him props on being able to deteriorate that a little bit uh, is taking that barricade and keeping one way drivers from coming onto our streets. Uh, unfortunately, it does look like Beirut a little bit. So that's why I present from what happened in 2019 to today. Um, we do have uh, a lot of dangerous intersections that are, are occurring due to the restaurant. The one thing I just wanted to say real quick, because I don't want to take a lot of your time, is uh, to uh, uh, Alderman Vaccaro's uh, question about what is different. What's different is the experiences and the altering life changes that we have to deal with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, unfortunately, as Mildred said, our patrons um, that go to La Katrina are not the most respectful in the sense. Uh, we've had to endure cussing, yelling, almost fights, uh, thefts, trespassing, as well as many other things that we shouldn't have to do uh, on our residential street. What we're asking for is really just to bring normalcy back to our street. It's not so much just the parking, but really the normalcy. So if you can take that in consideration, uh, hear exactly what uh, the residents have done. Also with the petition, we really appreciate it. I appreciate your time and I'm open to any questions that you may have. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Alderman Bosley, I'm gonna do my vice chair first this time. Do you have any questions? It's gone. Alderman Vaccaro, do you have any questions? No, I have no questions. 
Okay, uh, Alder Woman Boyd, do you have any questions? No, uh, thank you very much. Okay, Alder Woman Martin, any questions? No, thank you. Alder Woman Swicer, any questions? No, thank you. Alder Woman Phil, any questions? Phil, any questions? No. no. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Zona. Thank you so and much, I, Mr. Zona. And I, I do I'm appreciate, not, I'm not going. I just I just appreciate to pull us to testify. testify. I'm sorry, Alderman Bosley. I'm sorry, did you have Alderman a question? Bosley, did you have a question? No, ma'am. Just, just wanted to pull over before I turn my camera back on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, so, so, the next question, the next, next person we have is Tony Nowak. Oh. Okay. Um, Mr. Nowak, no good morning. Uh, would you state your full name, please? Tony Nowak. And are you a resident of 16th Ward? I am. Okay, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? I do. Thank you. Um, so you could go ahead and make your presentation. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess I just want to recap a few things. There were a few concerns or things brought up. It's, it's interesting, probably good to note, there's multiple restaurants near us. Um, the restaurant in question at our corner, La Katrina, is licensed for around 200 people and eight, they have eight, six to eight parking spots. There is a similar Mexican restaurant across the street that's licensed for 50 to 60 capacity and they have eight parking spots. Uh, there's another restaurant about two blocks away that it has a 150 person capacity and they actually have 20 parking spots. So my point in saying that, and it's a whole separate issue as to why this restaurant was able to receive such a large capacity and that's to be dealt with in other ways, I guess. But what that means is what the restaurant does is stretch and absorb far more public resources than any of the other businesses. So the business model they have is dependent because they didn't put their money into parking, they put it into tables and revenue generating type things. So they're dependent for their business model to work to absorb far more public resources such as parking than the other businesses. Um, so that, that was one point. And then to the point, I think it came up, if we do this in the 5,700 block of Walsh, doesn't that create problems? on other blocks, which is a great question. And if you looked at the blocks here, you, you would see that our block is the clear first choice for parking. There is no other clear first choice after the 5,700 block of Walsh. So the belief is that if this block becomes permitted, that the traffic would just naturally disperse to multiple other blocks. There is no clear cut choice for the traffic to go to after our block. So we don't believe it's going to result in over parking on one particular block that it'll just naturally um, fan out to other places. Um, and, you know, and we, you know, we like having the business, we like having the businesses around us. It's great for the neighborhood and we don't, sit here saying we face any more or different, any different problems than anybody else who lives within a block of a business in the city. We know that comes with city living. What the challenge is, is the problems we face like others near businesses are magnified and multiplied due to the capacity issue with this restaurant and our proximity to it. So um, I, think that's, uh, I think that's all I had and I appreciate your time, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Alderman Bosley, do you have any questions of uh, Mr. Nowak? I have a comment. It's great to see the residents are uh, definitely coming out for the issues that exist within the neighborhood. A lot of times we see much more uh, issues that are kind of uh, pressing that residents don't come together on. So it's good to see residents come together on issues that um, they see that you know, when we're asking for businesses to come into the neighborhood, what would be the common issues that we do have when we get those businesses there. So, um, you know, it's, uh, this is something that uh, is pretty interesting. I do have residents that are now starting to see kind of an influx of traffic along Salisbury that are having problems with parking. So, 
you know, it's good to know how these issues are being dealt with from a residential standpoint. You know, we kind of get that way again. It's, uh, kind of in that same position where we can have those conversations to try to find some better parking. Okay. Uh, Any, okay. Alderman. Okay. Alderman. Uh, Alderman. McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Because Alderman Vacaro. I'm sorry. Alderman Boy stepped away for a few minutes. Alderman Vacaro. Any questions? No question. Comments sponsor and comments okay well okay alder woman boyd any questions no i don't have any questions thank you alder woman martin no questions thank you alder woman Schweitzer. no questions thanks alder woman phil no questions okay i really do appreciate the residents for the 16th work uh coming out we have some, many of the same issues and in, in, in some the, some uh, gas stations that we particularly have an uh, issue like this about. And so I do, uh, and as I said, on Sundays, we have a lot of big churches around us. So it becomes a challenge. And people who don't live in the neighborhood don't really understand that challenge because it's not in front of their house. So, um, but I do. So I want to thank all of you all for coming. And especially, I'm sorry, um, Mrs. Bell. Did Laskill. Ms. Laskill? Yes. Mrs. You're not, I'm sorry, you weren't uh, signed up to speak, okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it had to be done by a certain time, so. No, I got it, the email to, to, to register to speak. I got the email. But you didn't speak, so we had to be have you signed up in time, so you weren't. Uh, I, I got the email last night that I was included, and I got an email today to Who speak. did you get an email from? I got an email. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. That's my mistake. I skipped over you. So you are correct. You are in here. I need some glasses here. Please forgive me. <laughs> I'm having a bad day. Please that's forgive that's me, that's Mrs. Laskia. Um, if you it's just with, confusing because I have Mrs. Bell here with. I me. think I, I did. did thought that. you were just helping her. I'm sorry. Yes, I, understand. I understand. Would you state your full name, you please? State your full name, please. Garon Laskill. Garon Laskill. Okay. And um, are you a 16th um, ward resident? 16th ward resident. Okay, and do you I, swear to tell the whole okay, you you thing you you before, before the streets Yes, okay. I do. And again, I'm so sorry, because I just okay. thought you were helping her. No, that's okay, I understand. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and thank you so much, uh, Alderman Oldenburg, for um, arranging this. Um, I'd like to speak about the, fifth, about the safety issues on the 5700 block of Walsh. Our street is a one-way running street east to west and La Katrina sits at the corner of Hampton and Walsh. Our, our alderman graciously had the street department bring in a concrete barrier and that has reduced the wrong way right hand turns onto the street. Uh, because our street is adjacent to the summer garden of La Katrina, our street is prime parking for the nearly 200 uh, capacity restaurant. Our street is also home to five residents over the age of 80 who still drive. And we currently have um, five to six handicapped spots on the street. The large volume of traffic from the restaurant, which includes people who circle multiple times, people who drive above the speed limit, people who, who drive east to west looking for a good parking place and then back all the way down the street because they have missed a parking place and they try to capture it, along with wrong way left-hand turns makes our street chaotic to say the least. It is not only difficult for residents to park on our street, but to remember to look from behind as indicated by street direction, but also to look ahead for people backing down the street or driving the wrong direction down the street. We also couple the driving activity with a high volume of pedestrians who are frequently intoxicated and walk in the middle of the street. I have witnessed near misses of handicapped residents who are maneuvering walkers and not looking at the cars who are backing down the street. I have witnessed intoxicated girls mooning in the middle of the street and nearly hit by wrong way drivers. And of course, I have many more stories and also videos of these near misses. The idea of residential parking was first mentioned to us by a city councilor 
who's been working with residents to help us with issues related to the restaurant. And it has also been mentioned to us each time parking enforcement comes to ticket restaurant guests who have taken up handicapped spots. These spots are frequently held by patrons from the dinner hour to the time the restaurant closes, which causes those people who have disabilities to walk a block or more in the dark to retrieve their vehicles to their assigned spots. It is for these reasons that I believe making this block residential only parking will help restore safety for our residents and for the patrons of the resident of the restaurant who will continue to use our block and walk to the restaurant. I thank you so much for your time and for your consideration and for Alderman Oldenburg to help us with this situation. Thank you. And again, I'm sorry that I got the, I did the mix up. Okay, and, and instead of asking everyone, I'm gonna ask if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand. And um, other than that, um, we will proceed on. Is there anyone on the committee that has a question of this speaker? Seeing none, we will proceed. Alderman Oldenburg, I lost you someplace. Nope, I'm here. Oh, here you are, okay. All right, um, you are, uh, you, you are, you can close at this point. Yeah, well, I, I, I have, have a question. Further, I, uh, oh, I'm not sure. I, oh, wait, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, sorry, someone said. Yeah, I, I have questions. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Alderman Vaccaro, okay, because I thought we asked him questions before, but I'm. No, you said, no, you said you can't ask questions. Of the you speakers. told me if we wait to the right. You told me that's to right. You are questions. correct. I'm having a hard day today. All right. So, Alderman, before we close, um, we're going to let committee members ask questions, and we're going to start with Alderman Vaccaro. Yeah, Tom, here's here's the issue. First, I guess some questions are: How many? Who's paying for the parking hang tags? How many hang tags per family? What if a family has more than one car? Does this mean if somebody's coming to visit them, they have to park on a whole nother block? I mean, these are the issues that come up when you try to do this. I mean, we can run every business out of the neighborhood or we can hold the businesses responsible. But I think the residents that signed for this, first off, they're gonna have to call the police every time they see somebody. What if one of the neighbor's kids come over to visit, then they're gonna have to park on a whole nother block. Or are you gonna give them five hang tags, but then or is only a hang tag for in front of only their house? What if they have two cars? I mean, there, there's a lot of issues. And then believe me, once you start it, every restaurant and everybody else is going to be saying, I want the same thing. You did it for them, do it for us. I just want to know, do you realize that? And how many hang tags? And is it that then if they, they have more than one car, they're either going to have to park, have a garage or park on a whole other street? And can no family members ever come visit them because they won't have hang tags for them? It's a whole series of questions. Yeah, thank you, Alderman. Uh, I mean, I, I think to, to be concise in an answer is that we have thought of, about a lot of those. These exist in, in uh, all sorts of neighborhoods throughout the city, and those issues are all addressed. And we plan to address them operationally with the residents and with third party operator. Um, to administer all that, guest guest passes can be uh, administered, um, and and we're we're prepared to have those conversations around why this block is unique and and really isolated to the to the situation, bar none than well, the others. Well, I guess. So, how many hang tags per household? What yeah, if they I, have more I, than I, one? I'm going to defer, I'm gonna defer to the the streets director's uh, experience and and expertise on on what on what that will be but my guess it'll probably be you know three or four uh per household can i make a comment i'm sorry hey, I make a excuse me um so only the the committee members that can speak now and if you have a question or you have a answer please raise your hand everybody else is, should be muted okay there. I'll say, okay, so um, I'm sorry, you can testify, but you're not part of the committee. Um, um, Alderman Oldenburg, so have you spoken with the uh, street 
department about how you were going to set this up? Or are you currently working with them? I did. I did. I'm currently working with them. I spoke with Director Wilson. Uh, we decided to keep the gears of government moving. He he supported this getting passed out of committee, and then uh, we would put forward any any additional details to to uh, make sure they're happy. The streets department just doesn't do anything operationally with these. If anyone you know who's close to that, they will they will put up the signs, and then we will have the third party operators as well as the residents um, uh, run through these operationally, very much akin to the same folks who manage them all over and other uh, and neighborhoods throughout the city. Alderman Vicar, would you mind if I could answer some of your questions about? Sure. No, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm open to anything. Okay, so um, the 17th Ward has an awful lot of them. I have a few of them. Some other people have a few of them. So what happens with uh, uh, with with uh, the tags that you put on We're review win window tags is that each uh, group kind of decides amongst themselves they actually pay for the tax themselves. The city does not incur costs except as, as the alderman has indicated. Um, and so that's, uh, it varies from parking district to parking district is what I'm trying to say. So they can't tell you sometime until they get together and make that decision. Is that your, is that an answer for you? It, 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 I'm sorry. It is. I just want to caution against it that I think what you're going to find is the restaurant across the street doesn't have any parking and people park up and down the street. I would just caution the aldermen from that ward, be prepared to start doing every, you know, street all around the Berg High School. You, I mean, you can go down the list, but I, I just, I always have concerns about this. Uh, and and uh, anyway, no, I have no other questions. I, I just... You know, I just, I have a lot of concerns about it, that's all. Um, well, uh, and if you don't mind, Alderman, do you anticipate this in somehow affecting uh, the 23rd Ward? No. Okay. Well, other than all my residents will call and tell me that they <laughs> want to shut down Trotteria Marcella, which has no parking. Big East has no parking. Pietro's has parking, but it overflows the street. And, and... They're just all going to call going, well, he did it. Why don't you? And, you know, I mean, we can, we can technically block every business up and down the street. St. Joe of Art, they don't want people coming there and parking. We can block all the parents from being able to pick their kids up from Mellencraft School because Mellencraft School blocks the whole street. I get calls from Thelosen because they can't come home at night because it be about the same time as pickup. So, I mean, yeah, no, I, I mean, I'll get tons of phone calls from people saying, well, they did it and we should do the same thing. And then we just shut down. I mean, like I said, if and you're a big kid, Alderman, you could just say, no, that's not a good idea for the 23rd board. That only works for the 16th and the 17th board. There you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Alderwoman Boyd, do you have any questions of the sponsor before he closes? No, ma'am. I'm sorry. Alderwoman Martin, any questions? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Alderwoman Schweitzer, any questions? No, thank you. And I'm sorry, I just got, let me make sure I said my last, Peel, okay. I'm so sorry, Alderwoman, Alderwoman Peel. Are there any questions? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, her name, I've been pronouncing it wrong. Okay. Um, Alderman, then you are uh, you are free to close. Excellent, Madam Chair. It's, um, do you want me to make the motion, or as a member of the committee, need? No, to, if you have anything to say, and oh, then I will entertain a motion. I'm just if you have anything to close on. I have nothing else. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, at this time, I'd entertain a motion that Board Bill 33 be passed out with a due pass recommendation. Second. Now I need a motion first. Um, I move that we pass board. We pass Board Bill. You said 262. 333. 333, I'm sorry. I moved that we pass board bill 333. I'm sorry. I moved that we pass board bill 333. I want to do pass recommendation. No. 33. 333. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> 33? I'm glad I gave that. It's, it's, it's like 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. <laughs> I, that's what I thought I said 33 the last time. I'm sorry. I moved that we pass board bill 33 out. With a due pass recommendation. Second. Second. 
we have a motion and we have a second that board bill 33 be passed out with a due pass recommendation. Um, is there a call for previous role? Previous role. Is there objections to previous role? No, I'm not going to object. I just caution against it. <laughs> Hearing no objection, board bill 33 is passed out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Alderman. Chairwoman. Ah, Thank you, yes, ma'am. Just to let you know that Alderwoman Peel voted present on the Okay, so being, um, do, being that I was on the uh, side of... Oh, yes, I voted present. Okay. Being that I was on the side of... Uh, Prevailing board, side. Uh, thank you. I'm the, the, the Say it, Alderman, because I'm crazy this the morning. The prevailing side. Preve thank you very much. Being that I was on the side, the prevailing side, I make a motion that we reconsider Board Bill 33. Second. Second. Alder Alderwoman, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? And I don't drink, people, and I haven't <laughs> had coffee or tea. <laughs> uh, Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Vicoro. Um, Are you having trouble getting my thing to... No, I'll vote aye. I'm not, not in favor, but I'll still vote aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderman Morton. Aye. Alderman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Aye. Chairwoman Tyus. Aye. Eight aye votes. I want to uh, explain. I forgot we have new people. So if you uh, pass something and you don't and you have the chance um, when doing that uh, same meeting or at the next meeting to reconsider it if you were on the prevailing side. And since we do not want to leave Alderwoman Field out with uh, her vote as a present, we reconsidered the vote and now we're gonna go back and um, we're gonna ask for the chair to uh, do a roll call on board bill uh, 33. I'll remember. So, wait, so, Chair, let, gonna... so wait a minute, we're gonna do another motion just so we clean it up. I'd entertain a motion that board bill 33 be passed out with a due pass recommendation. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Madam Chair, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bacoro. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderman Morton. Aye. Alderman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderman Peel. Aye. Chairwoman Tyus. Aye. Eight aye votes. By your motion, you passed out board bill uh, 33 with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Okay. And thank you to all the people who showed up to testify. We did hear you. So now it moves to the full board. And um, I'm sure um, if the alderman works very hard, we can have a successful uh, board bill that's passed and put on the mayor's uh, desk in a few weeks. Okay. Um, next board bill is 35. And that is with Alderwoman Shameen Clark Hubbard. And she has one, two, two people that I see that have come to speak. Oh, yeah, my picture. Oh. Um, and so, uh, Madam Clerk, would you read the introduction to Board Bill 35? Yes, ma'am. Give me just a second. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Board Bill 35 sponsored by Alderwoman Shamine Clark Hubbard. The proposed bill would create a two-way stop site at the intersection of Clarendon Avenue and Maple Avenue to control the northbound and southbound traffic on Clarendon Avenue approaching the intersection of Clarendon Avenue and Maple Avenue, the proposed bill contains an emergency clause. Okay, Alderwoman Clark. Thank you, Thank you uh, Madam Chairwoman and members of the committee. I have an amendment I would like to offer for Board Bill 35. <laughs> Is uh, it okay? Is it, I didn't see it. Did you put it, um, did the clerk put it in the uh, docs? 
Yes, ma'am. I also have a constituent and I want to speak to the uh, STLTV now that had needed the link. He was sent a link, but he said it's just a webinar link and he isn't able to speak. His name is Micah Hainline. Hainline. Okay. And so is he is he online now or he still wasn't able to get on? He said the link he has is set like a webinar. He's not able to speak. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, while I'm looking up her, uh, looking up her board bill, she said she is email in the chat. He actually has two. Can we has right, two speakers. Can we uh, can we look up and see what happened with that, Madam Clerk? I think he's on the attendee side. They sent him the wrong link. Oh, he needs to be given the right to speak. Okay, if he can be given the right to speak, then he has two speakers. He has his self, himself and a neighbor. Okay, I see him now. And then Miss Woods is here as well. Okay, so we only are allowed to, the people to speak or the people who signed up, okay? Yes. Did they all yes. sign up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the list that I got from the clerk says that there is Vanessa Woods for you mm -hmm. and Mika... Hanlon and Mike. Laura Mullins. Yep. yep. And similar to our past bill, Mrs. Mullins is going to come in on Micah's um, electronic device. So there are three? Yes. Okay. All right. And then you said you have an amendment to your board bill? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's see here. Um, 35. Does everyone have her amendment? I don't see it. It's in the Google. Let me refresh. Maybe I did this before this was done. So does any does anyone else have the amendment before them? What's the board bill? Oh, it's in there. 35. 35. I do have it. Okay. Yeah, me, I have it. Okay, let me refresh. Because it's like a map or something. Uh, it's the it's the amendment where it strikes out, and there's also a new map, and there's also a clean copy. Okay, I, I believe you. I just don't. I, I did this um, earlier because I print mine out so I can make sure everything is before me. So I'm refreshing now to make sure that I have it going out. Coming back in. Okay. Board bills. Combined, combined, thirty five, thirty five. The map that I have is was part of the original board bill. Let's see here. It's 58, 58, 58. Could somebody, oh, here, now it showed up, okay. All right, I'm sorry, now I have it here and I just want to take a minute to look at it, okay? okay. So, on line seven. Okay, 
So we're just really striking out uh, maple and putting in uh, Vernon. Yes. Okay, and don't we also want to do that on, since you also say, let's see, uh, Clarendon and Maple in line two, wouldn't you also want to do it um, in line two? Um, you're talking about on the summary or? No, on, on the, the first page, I'm on the, the page it says, an ordinance establishing two-way stop sites at the intersection of Clarendon Avenue, and it says Maple. Do we want to change that also to Vernon? Well, on the clean copy, yes, it is changed on the clean copy. I'm sorry, I must be looking at something different. No, but I'm just looking at the amendment, how it's written. It says, oh, okay. Okay, so it says beginning on page one, line seven. But also we'd have to do line two is what I'm saying. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna change it both up where it says Clarendon and, and then we will strike out Maple and put Vernon. Yes. Okay, and then line seven, uh, intersection of Clarendon and then strike out Maple and put Vernon. And, and on the introduction, we wanna strike out Maple and put Vernon. So it's three places that we have maple. We want to uh, strike that out and put Vernon in all three places. I see that. Yes. Okay. Please. Is that correct, Madam yes. Clerk? Do you want? Did you get that? So we're just strike striking out maple and replacing with Vernon. Right. There's one one maple that's in the uh, introduction, mm -hmm. and then on pay, a line two. Uh, the second word and maple, we want to make that Vernon. And then on line seven, Clarendon Avenue and strike out maple and put Vernon. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Now, so then you have to do, okay, so a board bill 35 is uh, before us now. And I think you need a motion to uh, introduce board bill to, uh, to amend board bill 35. Is there, does everyone on the committee follow what we did? Is there anyone that's not sure what we did? That we just struck out Maple and changed it to Vernon. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. So now. And I'll make the motion that we put board bill, I'm sorry, uh, uh, board bill number. Uh, 35. 35 as amended in front of us. Mm -hmm. I think the motion Second. is that we want to, okay, right. We want to amend board bill 35. Right, well, okay, we'll put the amendment in front of us. Right, okay. Um, uh, Alderman, go ahead and talk to us about your board bill. Okay. I'm sorry, there's a motion, we need a second. 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 Okay. Um, can we do previous roll? Hello? Yeah, previous roll. Previous roll. Right. Madam Clerk. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Everybody voted on the uh, motion before. Okay. Um, uh, there's a call for previous rolling and objection. Okay. Previous roll. So board bill 35 as amended um, is before us. Um, Alderwoman from the 26th. Everybody is moving around. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alderwoman from the 26th, present your bill, please. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Members of the committee, Board Bill 35 as amended is a step in the right direction for street calming over here in the 26th Ward in the Academy Sherman Park neighborhood. This is at the corner of an amazing street with very active constituents, um, the 5300 block of Vernon, which a couple of them are on the call of whom brought this to my attention. So this will create a four-way stop where there's now only a two-way stop and efforts to try to stop some of the speeding that goes on at the corner of their block that is um, a full block and there are a lot of children that live in that block. So at this time, I would like to have constituents um, speak if they could be sworn in and speak to the importance and the direct impact of the speeding and hopefully this four-way stop over there. Okay, and committee members, members, if it's all right, I will... Uh, let the speaker speak, and then we will come back to the older woman um, if you have questions for her. Okay. Um, the first speaker we have is a Miss Vanessa Woods. Are you still here? Yes, ma'am. 
I don't see you. I hear you. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, while you figure it out, do you mind if I go to the other speakers? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, Micah, is that right? Micah? Ha Micah Hainline. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Hainline, if you'd raise your hand. Um, and uh, what could you state your full name for me, please? Micah Asher Hainline. And are you a member of, are you a resident of the 26th Ward? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, and do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth to the street committee in your testimony before us? I do. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I just say that the, uh, since the um, street was opened at uh, Vernon and Union, and uh, street barricades were removed, uh, and that has resulted in a lot more traffic that goes through. Um, a stop sign, I think, would be very helpful in ensuring that traffic doesn't get T-boned at that intersection. In addition to that, uh, there are a lot of neighborhood children in, on our block, and crossing the street um, across uh, Clarendon can be quite dangerous. Um, the cars that are coming off of uh, Page see a long straightaway with nothing around, few parked cars, and there, it isn't until halfway through the neighborhood that the first stop sign approaches and they kind of get the clue in that they're on a residential street. So they have a tendency to move very quickly. Um, and our, the kids around here are very small. Uh, so I would just love to have that safety increased. There's plenty of other things to increase the safety of our neighborhood <laughs> around, around traffic that I'd love to do in the future. But at the moment, a stop sign would be an excellent first stop, step to help calm that traffic help uh, give people a, a place to know that they need to slow down, need to stop and, and give uh, them a second chance to see any kids that are crossing Clarendon. And that is really all I have to say. And you are in favor of the stop sign? I am in favor of the stop sign. Uh, okay. Ms., uh, Ms. Laura was supposed to be here with me. I haven't been able to get a hold of her and, and get her here. So I'm afraid uh, she may not be available at the moment either. Okay. All righty. Um, are there any members who have of the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay. And Ms. Woods, did we lose her all together? Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, Auto woman, mm -hmm. do you want to? I'm sorry, we lost Miss Woods, and he, she said Miss Mullins is not going to be able to speak. So mm -hmm. we're going to move this committee along. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's what I'm are, here for. <laughs> okay. Are there I'm members of the call. Okay. Are there members of the committees who have questions of the sponsor? Just a comment. Oh. oh, wait a minute. Okay, we go. Uh, okay, Alderman. Are you finished chewing? I am. I <laughs> okay, I'll move on. Macaro. I have to keep if my blood sugar goes down. I understand. Um, I keep well, orange juice for that. It doesn't. I mean, it goes up if I don't keep. Anyway, um, no, just just a comment. I mean, I'm I'm like the king of stop signs, so I'm probably <laughs> not going to object to that. Um, what I was just going to recommend: make sure they put a, some sort of a crosswalk or something, because what's going to happen is, and believe me, I put a bunch in, for the first little while, unless there's something really marking it out, the people crossing are going to think that it's safe because there's a stop sign there, and there's going to be people that have driven through that intersection since the beginning of time, and they're not going to see that sign. So sometimes it really helps if they put a big crosswalk in the street or something like that. <laughs> Because, like I said, I'm I'm big on stop signs, so I, I'm in support of this. So I just thought you might want to make sure the street department somehow makes it very visible. Because for a little while, nobody's going to be used to it. Thank you, Alderman Bosley. If you're still here, do you have any questions? No, ma'am. I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. Okay, Alderwoman Boyd. No questions, thank you. Okay, Alderwoman Martin. Questions, thank you. Schweitzer, Alderwoman Schweitzer. No questions. Alderwoman Phil. Uh, I have a question 
Um, some, someone, could somebody needs to mic them, uh, mute their mic because we can hear them and not this uh, old woman. Are you asking? Old woman Peel, I think you were asking. It's kind of muffled, but if you were asking if it's a two way or a four way, right now it is a two way, and we are asking to make it a four way. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't have any questions. Okay, Alder Woman, you are free to close. So, uh, Madam Chairwoman, it looks like Miss Woods came back on. Is she still able to speak, or are we just passed? Yes, that yes. No, 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 no. If it, because I know we're doing technology, so we won't stop. Hello, I don't see her, Miss Woods. Yes, ma'am. I still can't see you. Uh, no. <laughs> Do you have a cover over your uh, over your uh, camera? Now you should be in the there you go. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're, you're sideways, but there you are. <laughs> uh, rotating now. Okay. Let me see. How can I rotate? Okay. If you can't, we'll just have to. I'll do this. Okay. <laughs> and we'll all do it at the same time, kind of like synchronized swimming. But yeah, she'd be over there rotated. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now, now you're upside it, down. There no, you go. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right. Okay, so before she closes this, um, um, would you raise your right hand? State your full name, please. Vanessa Woods hyphenated Haynes. And are you a resident of the 26th Ward? Yes, ma'am. And um, Miss Vanessa Woods hyphenated Haynes, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the Streets Committee of the Board of Aldermen? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, um, I've been in the city for 45 years and I've been in the, uh, the 26th Ward for 21 years. And I've seen um, a difference in the speeding since I've been here uh, as a resident in the city of St. Louis, I say probably within the last 10 years, seems like people are going faster these days. And so right there at Clarendon and Vernon, it's like some people come past and doing 50 miles an hour. Some people don't even see the two-way stop signs because sometimes the trees are blocking them. And so my daughter was, uh, coming home one day and the guy ran the light and it hit, it hit our neighbor's house on the, uh, I would say that would be the north, probably northwest corner. She ran and hit, uh, where the guy hit her and she spun off and hit the lady's house. So that corner is very dangerous. Um, um, and then also I want to mention it since, you know, like I said, this speeding in the city is really getting out of hand. And people are just running through lights. They're running through stop signs. And it's, it, it's, it's becoming really dangerous for our pedestrians as well as our uh, kids to be able to get on and off the bus, you know. And, um, and I had brought it to um, Autumn and Hubbard's attention that we really need that stop sign, them stop signs to be there so we can at least slow them down. We might not be able to stop everybody, but at least it'll slow some people down and notice that we have pedestrian and kids in that area. Cause right now we just don't have anything there. It's just a two way stop there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I wanted to uh, mention. It's very, very critical that we get that stop signs them stop signs out there because like I say, school will be starting back up soon. And I'm talking about when you pull up on Vernon going east, it's a stop sign there. But you have to creep on to Clarendon because of the, it's like a like they on Highway 70 right there. I don't, you know, I just don't understand what the, you know, the drivers has really changed in the city. We have a lot of young kids driving these cars. And it's, it's, it's really, it's become, it's, 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 getting to be really bad for our pedestrians as well as, cause we have a lot of older pedestrians that's walking. We clean up in the neighborhood and we be out in our neighbors, you know, cleaning up and stuff like that. So we really need these stop signs and stuff out here. I mean, it's critical. 
And um, thank you very much for just hearing from me and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Woods. Is, uh -huh. there, is there anyone on the committee that has a question of Ms. Woods? Okay, hearing them. Uh, Alderman Boyd, did you have a question? I don't have a question of Ms. Woods, but I, I do have a question of the sponsor. I'm sorry I had to step away and, and now I'm back. So I'll wait and save it for the sponsor. No, this is the time because she was getting ready okay. to close. So you're right okay. on time. <laughs> Thank you. So so I'm looking at the map of Clarendon and Maple. And um, so. Uh, I'm sorry, Alderman Boy. We had an amendment. I offered up an amendment. Um, it was changed to Vernon and Maple. I'm Vernon and Clarendon. Oh. So okay. we're on. We're at uh, 35 as amended while you were gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, so is I mean, is Vernon blocked off on one side of the street? No, it's not. So mm -hmm. right now it's just a two way stop sign. I was just gonna pull it up on the map. Now my computer's acting crazy. Mm -hmm. okay. Right now it's just um, a two way. Mm -hmm. So so going. And and I certainly don't have a problem with it. Um, Although I'm not a big stop sign fan, um, just as much as I'm not a big speed hump fan, I think the city <laughs> needs to focus. The city needs to focus more on you know traffic enforcement than you know interrupting you know our life because all the good people stop at the stop sign. It's the bad people that don't stop at the stop signs, and we could put a stop sign up at you know every intersection. And the bad people will just do what they do. And all of us good people will stop at it. And when you look at pollution, you know, there are studies that talk about, you know, St. Louis has way too many stop signs across the whole city. But when you're afraid for your life of moving through an intersection, you're not trying to hear that. And I get it. And I'm supportive of that. That's why I'm supportive of speed humps. If you want it, okay, let's do a study. And if it warrants it, let's get it. But, you know, yeah. I just really think that, you know, the city needs to have a policy where we deal more with, you know, constructive traffic calming measures, including enforcement. So that's my piece. But I am supportive of your bill because if that's what your constituents want, then that's what they should get. Yeah, that's what we want. <laughs> okay. And I want to say he, he copied that from the former <laughs> alderman of the third ward who would always ask you when he was the chair of street, is that what your constituents want? then that's what your constituents should have. So that was one of his favorite sayings. So I want you to know that's not original. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for stealing my thunder on this okay. Well, uh, but you know, I'm loyal to that former you know, alderman from the third world. world. <laughs> I was his vice chair for eight years. I so I have to be loyal. Years, so I have to be loyal. <laughs> okay, alderman, I'm sorry. We digress. Uh, uh, alderwoman, you are uh, free to close on uh, board business. 35 as amended. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for listening to my constituents and for, to myself and the importance of this four-way stop sign. So with Board Bill 35 as amended, I do ask for favorable consideration and a do pass recommendation. All right. I'd entertain a motion that Board Bill 35 as amended be passed out with a do pass recommendation. Second. I, I need a I motion. Move, I, I, I move that it be I move passed out with a do pass recommendation. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, do we have a, everyone on roll that we could do previous roll, Madam Clerk? Yes, ma'am. I didn't. Is there someone who want to uh, ask for previous, previous roll? Previous uh, any objections to previous roll? Hearing none. Board Bill Thirty Five as amended is passed out with a do pass recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all the wonderful people who came to testify. Pre we appreciate you. Thank you. Um, the next one is Board Bill 36, and I think I saw Alderwoman Middlebrook. Uh, there she is here, um, and that's Board Bill 36. Um, Madam Clerk, would you read the, uh, the short synopsis? The over uh, Board Bill 36, sponsored by Alderwoman Lisa Middlebrook, the overall purpose of this bill is to conditionally vacate the following public alleys and streets. Prescott from East Clarence and East Athlone, East Holly from Bull to Prescott, the 20 foot wide L-shaped alley in city block 3447, as bounded by East Clarence, Bull, East Holly and Prescott, the 20 foot wide East West alley in city block 3444, 
as bounded by East Holly Board, East Athlon, and Prescott. The petitioner is Clarence Brown, LLC. The vacated area will be used to consolidate property for commercial redevelopment. Okay, thank you. Okay, Alderwoman Middlebrook. So thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, this is for a street vacation. The Clarence Broadway LLC is seeking um, vacation of several streets and alleys in the area bounded by Clarence, Broadway, Athlon, and Bulwer. Um, these vacations are needed in order to create a contiguous development parcel for a new trucking facility that will generate significant employment and taxable sales for North Riverfront in the city of St. Louis. Uh, the business is established in the city, but needs a larger site to accommodate a larger facility with highway adjacency. And there are no other similar sites available that would uh, provide this level of access and visibility for potential customers. Other businesses have expressed interest in purchasing the trucking company's current facility uh, for expansion. So no new vacancies will be created by this project. I have Nicole Blumner here who can speak um, for this, for Board Bill 36 and answer any questions. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, if, if the committee doesn't mind, we'll hold all uh, questions for the sponsor till after the speaker speaks. Um, we only have one person that I have and that's Nicole and she's speaking in favor of it. Is that correct, uh, Alderwoman Middlebrook? Yes. Okay. Um, would you raise your hand, Ms. Blumner? And state your full name. Nicole Blumner. And um, are you a resident of uh, uh, the second ward or just a speaker? I'm just a speaker. Okay, and you're part of, uh, are you part of Green Street, St. Louis? That's correct, I work for okay. Green Street. Okay, and if uh, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God, as you make this testimony before the Streets Committee and the Board of Aldermen? Yes, I do. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, um, Madam Chairman and Alderwoman Middlebrook. Um, as uh, the Alderwoman has stated, Green Street is proposing to redevelop approximately 15 acres in this area. It will be a new tilt-up construction building, approximately 70,000 square feet. It will be a state-of-the-art facility that will have truck vehicle sales, leasing, and maintenance facilities. Uh, we propose as part of this project to replat and upgrade the infrastructure to support the development. We're also going to remediate the existing environmental contamination and eliminate the blight in this area, which is a significant issue. Um, and this will continue the ongoing reinvestment that our companies made in the North Riverfront commercial corridor of approximately $50 million uh, to date. Just to speak on the employment, uh, the company has approximately 65 uh, employees that will be retained in the city, and then they plan to add another 23 approximately new employees at the larger facility, and we estimate about 140 construction jobs coming out of this project. It's an overall investment of about $18 million. And just to speak a little bit to uh, the specifics of the vacation, uh, Holly Street, um, really only runs from Broadway to uh, Bulwer. So it really will be um, part of this site and no longer you know, would access any other businesses. And then Prescott Street dead ends at Clarence already. So it's not really a through street anymore at this time. And again, would be right through the middle of uh, the project site. So there really is no way to do this project uh, with these streets you know, as they are. And obviously you know, the business that would be impacted is just really the business that will be located there, all the other businesses surrounding this will still have full access to their sites. So um, I think that's kind of the main points. And of course, I'm happy to take anyone's questions. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, there, is there anyone on the committee that has a question for the speaker? I hear anyone? none. Okay, hearing none. Um, then we will go back to um, the uh, sponsor. Is there anyone on the committee that has a question for the sponsor? Alderman Boyd? No questions, thank you, Madam Chair. Alderman Vaccaro? No questions. Alderman Bosley? Uh, no questions, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, Alderman Boyd? Uh, 
uh, out of woman middle brook is there any residential around there no there isn't okay okay no other questions thank you i was i was trying to place it so that's why i asked okay what about autumn Alder, woman martin any questions thank you Alder, woman schweitzer no questions thanks our woman Phil. No okay. Um, and I don't have any questions. Uh, Alderman Bosley, your hand is up. Do you have a question now? Yeah, I'm sorry. I do just have a quick question. Okay. Um, uh, who, who's the developer there? This is through Green Street. Okay. I thought I heard Green Street. Just wasn't sure. Thank you. Okay. Don't forget to lower your hand, your hand, Alderman Bosley. So, yeah, thank you. Okay, anyone else with any questions on the committee? Hear none, Alderwoman, you are free to close. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would just ask for your favorable consideration and a due pass recommendation for Bill 36. Okay, I'd entertain a motion. That I entertain a motion that board bill number 36 be passed out with a due pass recommendation. I make a motion we pass for bill 36 out with a due pass recommendation. Second. Previous roll. We have a motion and a second and a call for previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing none, board bill 36 is passed out with a due pass recommendation. Okay. We're going to go back up here to Alderwoman Martin's bill now, since I think we've done everyone that's on the com uh, that's not on the committee. Alder woman Martin, please. Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the uh, short synopsis of board bill number 10? Board bill number 10, sponsored by Alder woman Martin, the proposed bill directs the director of streets to permanently close, barricade, or otherwise impede the flow of traffic on the block of Virginia Avenue by blocking said traffic flow at the intersection of Virginia Avenue and Bell Reeve Boulevard. Ottawa Martin, you're free to present your bill. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, this is um, also kind of like a broken record here, but an attempt to calm traffic uh, for residents on a very wide um, boulevarded street, if you will. Um, there are, um, I know there's a map that was included in uh, the materials. Um, this uh, stretch of Bellary Boulevard in the 11th Ward um, it has a total of, um, it's east of Grand, it's uh, south of Bates, if anyone's familiar with that. Um, it's sandwiched in between Grand and the Virginia exit for 55. Um, what happens is it, the people or drivers looking to avoid driving down Bates um, for a variety of reasons. Um, and then also uh, those quickly trying to exit and, and get on and off the highway at Virginia 55, they take um, Bell Reeve and then just speed down it. And then even those not even looking to, um, you know, get to the highway quickly are just looking for a speedway. Um, so residents are scared. Um, they're going to get hit. They're tired of it. There's also been a lot of issues with uh, people getting off the highway, buying their drugs um, right by the highway. Um, it's, there's a known um, drug market. And then they go over to this shaded, quiet residential street. Um, they take that little Virginia entrance and they unfortunately overdose. Um, so I, for a long time, I really oppose any sort of street closure but I witness, I ride my bike on the street all the time. Um, that's a whole nother thing that um, a lot of residents um, in this area and, and living in the surrounding area, they take Belle Reeve um, to uh, cut across and ride their bike typically up Broadway to get to downtown for their commutes. And it's just really dangerous. So uh, there's, and then another thing is there's this uh, BP station that has been a constant nuisance proper, uh, property at Bates in Virginia. And a lot of people cut through to go there to get, um, you know, whatever they're getting at the BP. So um, I conceded to trying this. Um, there's a group of dedicated uh, Graham Bates neighborhood um, traffic calming uh, fo or folks that have created this committee. And they've promised to keep the shamel pots 
uh, planted and painted and looking nice and their houses are always um, in perfect condition with their landscaping. So I trust that they will do this. They've also been organizing mm -hmm. cleanups every other weekend. And so they are committed to keeping that area nice and tidy. And um, I said that I would uh, give this a try. Again, pedestrians and cyclists should have no problem cutting through, but erasing cars um, uh, will hopefully, uh, you know, at least slow it down a little bit for those looking to cut through. Um, and then there are uh, five other entrances and exits off this boulevard. So it's not really an inconvenience for anyone. Right. Um, Alderman Boyd, do you have any questions of the sponsor? Um, sure. Um, Alderman Martin, are, are you sure you're not representing a north side neighborhood? You mentioned you had drug deals going on, people that <laughs> overdosing. Okay, now. I mean, well, you don't look like no, me. No, Alderman Boyd. Um, we've done some, uh, we, you've read my neighborhood, I've gone up to your neighborhood. Um, our residents had the, had the exact same complaints, um, maybe a different meeting location, but our residents, uh, sounded, uh, pretty much the same. So. Yeah. Yeah. And my only, and, and of course, thank you for sharing that because we have done that. And I think that's what makes the board of Alderman work better when we do, you know, tour each other's neighborhood and listen to the concerns that other people have, because, you know, the grass is always green on the other side, they say, but not necessarily so. Um, but again, I, my commentary, I, I, I'm not a big proponent of closing streets. Again, it's a nuisance to those who, you know, obey the law and do right. But this is your neighborhood and this is what your people want. And, and I will support you on that. I no further questions that. or comments, Madam Chair. Thank you. Auto member Carl, any questions of the sponsor? No, no questions at all. I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay, Alderman, Alderman Bosley, any questions of the sponsor? Uh, no questions at all. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Boyd, any questions of the sponsor? Uh, I just have one question because I've run into it. Have uh, the fire department and the police department that was be mine. of that of those closures? Because um, in my ward, we had a person die because the fire department didn't know the street was blocked off. Yes, so that was the first thing uh, that um, the uh, counselor and the streets department did was vet that with the fire department. That's a good question. I should mention that. Um, vet it with the fire department and um, the police department. And it is um, one uh, small stretch that doesn't have, won't have the cross street, but it's uh, easily accessible through um, the various other cross streets. Any further questions, Alderman Bullitt? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I know Alderman Martin doesn't have any questions of herself, so we're going to move to Alderman Schweitzer. You have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Um, Alderman Field, any questions? No, thank you. Okay. And I'm sorry, I see Alderman Evans. Did you have any questions? <laughs> no, no questions. I'm learning. Okay. And I do want to point out, so this morning, I'm, I guess the mayor's office got really busy with our committee because I got a, 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 a let's, what is it called? A modification policy relating to closures, restrictions, and traffic calming measures. And so um, one of the things they said is you're supposed to have some okay from the street department traffic commissioner. I did call Jamie this morning and talk to him. Jamie Wilson being our, our acting street, interim street director and current streets uh, 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 commissioner. And what I, he and I are working out is instead of us asking the questions of the sponsors and you're not gonna be affected by this, uh, I'm uh, just about finished uh, completing a checkoff so that we won't have, won't, people won't say they didn't know. So we're gonna make a form that, so when you wanna introduce these things that the form from the street director and the, uh, uh, fire department has to uh, sign off and all the affected different agencies have to sign off and that will be presented to the committee so that people can't say they didn't know because I'm quite surprised at what I hear from Alderwoman Boyd about a street being closed and the fire department didn't know because uh, 
uh, I, they are notified, even if they didn't sign off on it, they are notified. I've been closing streets for a lot of years, and this is the first time I ever heard of somebody actually having a death related to that. So in the future, we will have a form that the street director, if when you go to do that, um, and you have to, uh, when you go to close your street, either talking to BPS or the street director, they will tell the older people that there's this form that we have to make sure this uh, checked off and that has to be presented to this committee so that people will not have any deniability that they didn't know about it, okay? But we're not doing it for this one, but just wanted to bring it up. Um, but other than that, I don't have any questions. Um, older woman, you are free to close on your bill. Our woman Martin. Sorry, for some reason I thought I was muted, but I wasn't. Um, anyways, uh, I uh, appreciate everyone's consideration. Uh, I do think that this is a good opportunity just to see if this works. Again, it's not permanent, and um, we can uh, find out. I know everyone is just pretty desperate right now to calm traffic and figure out solutions. Um, just as a side note, you know, I hope we start looking at this more citywide and looking at larger thoroughfares and the main entrances and exits and working on making certain streets more residential friendly um, as opposed to making them, you know, people looking for alternative thoroughfares um, just to get somewhere fast. And so that's my two cents, but um, thank you all very much. Okay. I'd entertain a motion to pass out board bill 210 uh, with a due pass recommendation. I'll make the motion we pass board bill 210 out with a due pass record. I'm sorry, 10. Board bill 10 out with a due pass record. Previous roll. Have a motion, a second, and a call for previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing no, none, board bill 10 is passed out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Alder Woman. Madam Chairman, yes. I, say, I'm going to probably, the, we got a public safety meeting that happens in 10 minutes. I am fine with previous role on, on your bills coming up. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and I will put your name on the ones you told me to, okay? Yeah, okay, because we're gonna have to start. A lot of the people that are on this committee happen to be on that committee too. I know, I, and this is the thing about having to have public testimony. You just don't know. I tried to limit some of the bills. And so, you know, we're, we're working our way through this. Sometimes we, we make rules that we don't know the final outcome of them. Is, is, I there, am, is there <laughs> public testimony on the next three bills? Well, so what I'm going, yes, because we have the uh, treasurer here and I'm so sorry. I'm going to skip to that bill first, okay? I'm not going to hear my alley bill. It's going to put that aside. But the treasurer is here, and I want to just skip to uh, Board Bill 58. That's their budget, so we need to get that done. And if I have to hold other stuff, I will, but that is very important. Um, um, Madam Clerk, I thought we saw, I just did they, we just lose the treasurer? I just saw him here. I see him. I'm going to. Oh, there you are. Okay. But I okay. am, am good with previous roll. Okay. If for some reason that doesn't work, can somebody email me and I'll sign back into this meeting? I'm going to sign in on the other one. Okay. We'll wait and give you a second to, if we need the vote. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, would you read uh, the introduction to Board Bill 58? Board Bill 58 sponsored by all the women, Sharon Tyus. This board bill is recommended by the Parking Commission for making the appropriation for payment of the operating expenses, capital equipment, and improvement expenses, including lease purchase agreements involving parking division assets, debt services, expenses of the parking division of the treasurer's office for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022. The parking division consists of the Keel and City Hall parking facilities, information technologies office, Argyle parking facility, Shoto building and parking facility, Williams paper parking facility, central downtown parking facility, Buckingham Parking Facility, Couples Parking Facility, and Justice Parking Facility. It contains an emergency clause. Thank you. Um, members of the committee, um, Alderman Bosley, are you here? Because uh, I'm gonna need you to, I guess I'll be the chair and testify. Alderman Bosley? Uh, yes, ma'am, I am here. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, Alderman Bosley, I'm gonna need you to be, the, as my vice chair, to be the chair while I present this board bill before the committee. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, uh, board bill 58 committee substitute. Um, you should have a committee substitute that was put in your, uh, in the, the docs. Is that, did that, does everybody have that? Yes. Okay, um, and we did get them in time. Um, and also you have uh, Board Bill 58 Committee Substitute has a number of exhibits. What, they are uh, labeled Exhibit 1R and Exhibit uh, 1R through 10 and Exhibits 1 through 10. And also there are handouts. Um, and that is because uh, Board Bill uh, 58 Committee Substitute, I move that we, uh, I'd ask that we uh, put Board Bill 58 Committee Substitute before the committee. Second. Uh, any requests for previous row? Previous row. Uh, any, any objection? Row noted. Any objections to previous row? Hearing none, Board Bill 58 is before our committee. I'll help you out a little bit because you're going in and out, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair. Hello? Any other sir? There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Board Bill Committee, uh, Board Bill 58 Committee Substitute, as said, was a is a recommendation by the Parking Commission making appropriations for payments of operating expenses, capital expenses, um, at least at least purchase agreements in any way the the bill comes to uh and also for uh parking division and it's uh in the sum of 17 million seven hundred seventy seventeen million seven hundred and seventy three thousand eighty two um and so one of the things we did because the previous chair alderman bosley i'm, I'm sorry alderman boyd had uh, asked for that we have expenses and revenues included. So we actually did, we have a, uh, a, a exhibits 1R through 110, which are the revenues. And we also have exhibits one through 10, which are the expenses and they are referenced in this board bill. Um, and we also gave you a handout uh, that was prepared and we have speakers that will speak to it. So I just wanted to make sure that you all saw these handouts because I thought it was a good idea that the previous chair had about making sure that we understood both the uh, revenues and not just the expenses. And um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, we have a number of speakers here today to speak to this board bill. Um, and they are the treasurer, Mr. Adams Lanes, uh, Frank Williamson, who is uh, also works for the treasurer's office, Rita Godley, God. Galladay, who's for the treasurer's office, and Mr. Lenny Freeman, who also works for the treasurer's office. Um, One second. So we. I'm sorry, we're going with the treasurer first, and the yes. second person is who? The Are second the person it is who might want to testify is uh, uh, Mr. Frank Williamson, who used to be our member. Okay, and the third person was? Rita, G-O-L-I-D-A-Y. She's a member of, she's also an employee of the treasurer's office. G-O-L-I-D-A-Y? Yes, sir. Galladay. And then Mr. Lenny Freeman, who is our parking czar. Okay. Mr. Lenny Freeman. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, we uh, we can now take testimony from uh, the Thank you, chairs. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, my name is Adam Lane. I'm the treasurer for the city of St. Louis. Um, before you with uh, Board Bill 58 is our budget for the 22 or for fiscal year 22. Um, I first want to, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank my finance team of which one of our members is here today. Um, but our CFO, Michelle Smart, worked really hard as well as our whole executive team um, and every, me every member of our 
um, office to make sure that we had a, a viable budget going forward next year. Um, I think it goes without saying that uh, COVID did take a hit on our revenues, which mostly comes from or only comes from parking, um, parking enforcement on and off street. Um, and with that, uh, with the suspension of parking uh, enforcement due to the pandemic, and then also, I'm sorry, I was hearing an echo. And then also the um, uh, folks not being able to go to work, folks being off and uh, people working from home, businesses closing on that and events uh, halting, that did take, uh, that did create a hit to our revenues. So moving forward into the next fiscal year, um, I really uh, appreciate our CFO for looking into what are all our possible options for um, being sustainable moving forward. So not only recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic in, in 2020, um, but also moving forward in a, in a sustainable way so that we can make um, all our payments, not have to lay off staff um, and make good on our, our bond commitments. So I am here to uh, recommend, so we had a um, pretty robust conversation within uh, the parking commission. Um, and this is probably our, uh, just internally, probably our fifth or sixth iteration of this budget. So we, we wanted to make sure that we did our due diligence went back and forth to workshop it to present the best possible um, budget for fiscal year 22. Um, and I believe that this is it. Um, in addition to in addition to that, you know, we are still struggling. Um, and I know uh, Mr. Williamson can speak to that as well as the other, um, uh, my other team members on this call. So we are still struggling. We are burning through our reserves um, at a fast rate, reserves that have previously been depleted as well. Um, so that's that's a twofold um, twofold problem that we are are working on, but we do believe that with the numbers and uh, recommendations that we have put forth in this budget, that that will will help us out. Um, I will stop there and pass it over to Mr. Williamson to test, or I'll I'll stop there because I don't have the power to do that. Um, but I will also let you know that if there are questions about specific numbers, that's why. Um, uh, Ms. Galladay and uh, my parking administrator, Leonard Freeman, are on the call, um, and I can take questions as well when it's time. Thank you. Uh, you're on, you're on mute. You're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, thank, thank you, um, uh, Treasurer Lane. Uh, appreciate it. I'd like to go through the, the members of the committee to ask if they have any questions of you. Um, starting off, uh, and I don't have, uh, unfortunately, my apologies, the list of the committee members um, in the correct order. Um, Boyd. So we'll go starting off, please. Uh, Chairman Boyd, I mean, Alderman Boyd. Do you uh, have any questions? Yeah. Yeah, sure. But um, Mr. Mr. Vice Chairman, I was just wondering if Mr. Lane, first of all, uh, had other staff to make a presentation or is he just going to yield to them if there's a question that's more in their wheelhouse? No, we don't have a presentation. So okay. um, I believe that you all receive the supporting documentation uh, for our our um, budget. So that that is the presentation um, in terms of anything else. It'll just be more questions as they come. Uh, first of all, congratulations, uh, Mr. Lane, on, on your appointment as treasurer. Um, I'm going to try to make this as painless for you as possible. I only have a few questions. Um, I, I, one thing that stuck out for me, because certainly I was the chairman for three years and, um, and quite familiar with the budget, um, the Office of Financial Empowerment seemed to be increased by almost $100,000. Can you explain you know, why such a huge increase to 400 some thousand dollars when it used to be just like 300 something? Yes, yeah, so I can speak a little bit to that and I, then I can also pass it off um, uh, to read it to talk to the, talk about the, the numbers specifically. So over the last few years, our Office of Financial Empowerment has grown. So we, um, when we started off, I believe we only had two staff members. Now we have uh, four total. So we also have Operation Hope working with us. So we have Hope Inside. Um, so those are additional costs. And um, with those additional costs, we've also been able to increase the number of St. Louis citizens and 
people in the St. Louis region that we've been able to serve through Operation Hope, um, through the classes that we offer with our offer, Office of Financial Empowerment, and then also um, with our College Kids program that's housed within the Office of Financial Empowerment, that continues to grow as well. So we are going into year six with that, which means that, you know, I guess three years ago, we had only three classes, um, kindergarten one through three, um, or kindergarten through two. Um, now we're going to have K through six that are enrolled in this program. Um, so over time, as a program has grown, as our services to the community have grown, um, the budget has also grown. So have you grown to the sixth grade because you're following those students that was once in kindergarten? Or are you just expanding from kindergarten to third grade to fourth, fifth, and sixth? The former. The fourth, fifth, and sixth, okay. Um, no, the former, so we're, we're all the students continue on, so they're tracking. So next year we'll have K through seven. So we, uh, students enter into the program kindergarten once they enter a St. Louis public or charter school. Um, so every year students will never, they won't exit the program unless they leave the city. Um, so as we move on, the students get older, we take in the next group of kindergartners, and then we continue to serve them to and through high school. So, so if I remember correctly, Hop Operation Hope, um, they were contributing to, they were contributing financially to the Office of Financial Empowerment. Is that still true? They contribute, um, and then also some of our banking partners uh, we're trying to get them on board to contribute as well. So, so how much money is Operation Hope contributing to the Office of Financial Empowerment? I don't have that number offhand, um, but that number is, we have a contract, we, we, have a, we have it written in our contract. That's something that I guess we can provide additionally. Um, I don't know, Rita, do you have that number offhand? Um, OF, not offhand, because OFE is not, part of the parking budget. So I don't really deal with that side of it. That's more on the treasurer side. Okay, so I tell you what, I, I will save some of that questioning for the treasurer side. Um, but it was my expectation that you kind of knew what was going on on the parking side since parking uh, commissioners approved you know, the transfer of those funds over there. Um, this is a project that a good idea have unintended consequences. So when you're looking at a city budget and you're looking at, you know, I've been on 18 years and it seems like we've been cutting positions, you know, every year. And, and, and now as a program would grow like this, which makes sense, you're gonna end up with more staff. And if we go back to the inception of this program, it's been steady growing and growing and growing. And, you know, the big question is, you know, how does it become a program that's sustainable upon itself? And that's not, you know, taken away from the general revenue because the way this program was sold before your time, I'm not even sure you were in St. Louis at the time, but it was sold as a program that would fund itself and that it would not, you know, take away from other revenues of the city of St. Louis, but that proved to not be accurate. And that this program, you know, it relies on parking revenues in order to fund itself. It doesn't get any money from general revenue. Is that correct? Correct. Um, so I'll address a couple of things. I think there's some conflation going on. So are so you're talking about programs with unintended consequences. Are you talking about Operation Hope? Or are you talking about college kids? Because those are two separate. I'm talking about OFE, the whole organization. You know, okay. it was formed. So what you're referring to in terms of self-funding is college kids. So OFE is, there's a delineation, one. Uh, two, the only part of the college kids program that gets funded through parking revenues and parking tickets is the seed money for the initial class. So even though we will keep growing K through 12, um, the only funding that goes toward that from those parking tickets, which was set at the beginning five years ago, and I was here, um, but that was, that still continues. So that line item stays the same or even decreases depending on how many kindergartners are enrolled in, in the city. No, the program was sold to the Ways and Means Committee as a program that was self-funding, that it would receive grants and that it basically would not interrupt 
normal revenues. That is a fact. And if you want me to share the YouTube video, I can, but that is a fact. And so when a program grows, naturally you're going to need more funding. And if you're not raising enough money from your corporate sponsors, then more burden is put on parking revenues. Isn't that correct? Uh, no. Explain. Sure. So, so like, you don't have parking revenues, how do you fund it? Yeah. So like I previously stated, the uh, seed money is the only part that comes from parking revenue. Um, as you're aware, well, one thing that we've been seeing is that the amount that we're seeding from parking revenue for our incoming classes, which is the only class that we provide that seed deposit for, is actually mm -hmm. increasing because population in the city, number of students attending uh, city public and charter schools is also decreasing. Um, now, from the other side, we do provide incentives for the accounts, and we can only provide um, up to $100 per year per student. Um, and we are actively fundraising for that. So most recently, um, we have uh, raised $20,000 from Give STL Day, which was our most successful Give STL Day campaign to date. Um, this weekend on Saturday, we're collecting another $20,000 check um, from a partner that's chosen to um, identify us as an organization that they believe in and believe in the work that we're doing and see this going forward. So they've made a $20,000 commitment um, and that was, so I guess, what is it, June now? So over the last two months, we've raised just $40,000 to be able to continue funding that program, not just now, but continuing on in the future. And we are leaning on the partners um, and banking institutions that are in St. Louis to be able to also make similar commitments. So to your point, yes, fundraising is a big part of it. Um, and that's something that we're stepping into uh, much more fervently um, this year. And I think the last two months are our record of that. So, Mr. Lane, is it your testimony that the only funding, so this 400 some thousand dollars that's going to go to the Office of Financial Empowerment is all seed money? Is that your testimony? No, I'm not saying that. So, what I just heard you say, then I'm confused. Because what I heard you say is this money coming from parking revenues is only seed money. That's what I thought I heard you say. Was I incorrect? I'm saying the seed money, the seed money does come from parking ticket. Yeah, parking revenues. Okay, but staff seed is also is funded by parking revenues. Isn't that correct? Uh, I believe our staff budget does come out of our general operate, our GOBS. No, let's be clear. Is staff being funded out of parking revenues? I'm going to let Rita answer that. So okay. Rita... Cause I don't, I, I wanna make sure, cause I know we do the transfers from parking, but I wanna make sure I'm giving you the correct answer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it off to our financial. Uh, Hi, this is Rita. I can't give you an affirmative answer on that cause I wasn't a hundred percent involved with the OFE structure. So to say yes or no. What, I'm sorry. Uh, Rita, can you introduce yourself please? Hi, my name is Rita Galladay. I'm the accounting manager in the parking division. Um, also, is there any way you can turn your camera on? I'm Rita Galladay, the accounting um, manager in the parking division. Um, to answer Alderman Boyd's question, I cannot give you an affirmative answer as far as how much of their salaries are funded through parking revenues. Um, as Ms. As Treasurer Lane was explaining how OFE is structured. Because, again, I'm not well versed on the structure of OFE. My main role is dealing with the operational side of parking. So those are the questions that I can answer in the affirmative of how the budget was set up. Okay, Mr. Lane, uh, is Michelle Smart still working for the treasurer's, I mean, the parking operations? Yes, she is. She's out on medical leave right now. Okay, um, so. You're not sure if part of this $400,000 that's being transferred is paying for 100% of OFE staff. Is that what I'm hearing? I'm not sure what specific number of that is for. I don't, I don't want to know what. But not 100% of it is not because we specifically raise money for part of the OFE staff member's salary. So I can say for sure that 100% of it does not go to fund 
um, staff member salaries. Okay. Um, and you're not sure what percentage goes for salary? Not right? really. Okay. And let me ask you this. Are you familiar with um, how much money or a percentage of the treasurer's budget itself within general revenue funds office of financial empowerment? I don't have that number offhand, no. Okay, let me ask you one other question that I'm going to get off um, because I, I just that. can't believe that I can't get straight answers from some simple questions that, you know, you guys know me and, you know, I go through this budget with that office. I've been through it three years and to not have this information makes absolutely zero sense to me. None. I mean, so to your last so. question, the question about what percentage of the treasurer's budget is allocated to that. I don't believe that's germane to parking division. It doesn't matter what you think. It's what the question I asked, sir. Because so this money is going I'm, over. I'm, I'm sure the last question is not germane to questions about the parking revenue. Let me explain something to you. I'm a senior alderman at the Board of Aldermen. And I get to ask whatever question I want to ask, unless the chairperson reprimands me for asking a question and being out of order, you shall answer the question. And you don't get to tell me if it's germane or not. Am I clear? Hello? Are you clear to me? Yes, about my role and how I can ask whatever question I want to. I'm sure you're clear about what you can do. Are you clear that I'm clear? Sure. So, so what we'll do so is we'll make a formal question. request. If excuse me, uh, make, we'll make a formal request for that information. Uh, and we'll make sure that you receive those documents, and the entire committee receive those documents that shows what percentage uh, is coming out of the general revenue to fund the Office of Empowerment. Um, therefore, we have a clear understanding of what exactly is coming out of the general revenue from this point on. Now, okay. my last Mayor, question. Can I ask a question to the chair? Uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Treasurer. Can you, uh, you know, just for a second for uh, Ottoman Boyd? Yes, sir. He still has the floor. Okay. So my last question is on the ticket revenue. I know that um, Ottoman Vicaro a year ago, uh, we did an ordinance whereby the treasurer's office could not double the fines on a ticket until after 30 days. Um, but it's my understanding that if you get a ticket, um, you'll get this notice in the mail. I'm not sure how soon you get the notice in the mail, but after 45 days, it will triple. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So or do you know if if that's a policy that was approved by the parking commission, or was that just a policy that was um, instituted by the previous treasurer? I don't know that, but I guess to your first point about a ticket doubling after the first 30 days, it does double after the 45 days, the original ticket does not double or the new amount does not double either. So if it goes from 15 to 30 and 30 to 45, Technically, going from 30 to 60 would be doubling. So to your question, no, I don't know when that was approved. But to the math of it, it's not actually doubling. So I don't think it's in violation of that rule. OK, well, my question was about. Um, so let me read your ticket. So it says late penalties. If the ticket remains unpaid 45 days after issuance, the penalty will be increased to three times the amount of the original fine. So if your original fine was $25, after 45 days, it will be 75. Is there a period in between when it doubles or you just automatically go to a triple after 45 days? After 30 days, it doubles. So after 30 days, it's an additional original ticket balance because we have different okay. amounts. And then after the, four, and then gotcha. after 45 day period that original balance is added again leading okay to 
Got you. So, so there's, so there's a, 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 a notice in between that if you don't pay it by, by the 30 days, it's going to double. Is that correct? Right. And then right. I got you. Okay. I just want to be clear on that. And again, I wasn't trying to be, you know, tough in this conversation, but you took me there. I was trying to be relaxed and just ask questions, but your attitude put me in a different space. And I just wanted to make sure I made the correct modification to how to, you know, be respectful to me. So Madam Chair, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I'm done. Uh, thank you, Alderman Boyd. Well, Carl, um, what's next? I think we're moving way too fast. I think all my officers would appreciate having a uh, Alderman, uh, Alderman Bacarum. Alderman, I'm sorry. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I've been one of the biggest supporters <clears throat> of folks in the workhouse. Um, Are you up to me? Last year and, and with these on Somebody, we're here in the back feed. I know, that's, I can't. That's Alderman Bacaro. He's in a committee hearing, so. I'm in two hearings at the same time. Can you turn uh, that down, please? Let me try. Hold on. Uh, because, uh, uh, Chair, I did. I know you uh, asked me to yield. I did have a question for clarification. You'll get back to me. Right. I will. Can we come back to you, Alderman for Carl? Well, I'm chairing another meeting at the same time. So can we come back to you? A little patience for a second. Just give me a little patience for a second. There, I found the way to turn it down. No, I, I just, um, you know, I mean, so I, I would say, if, 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 if you know. Uh, Alderman Bosley asked to have that information sent over. Uh, I would ask that we don't vote on this today, that we wait and get all the information. Alderman Bosley, um, can I we, intercede, please? Uh, yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, so we cannot vote on this if you want to or not. Um, and it's gonna proceed just like a budget. This is their budget. And it's going to do just what the budget does regularly, which is going to go into effect. Um, so I am asking for a vote on this. Anything that you want, um, I will. we have a second reading, and I will give you my word. I will get you whatever documents. If you all know me, you know if I tell you something, I'm going to do it. Then I will get you your documents uh, before we would do any perfection or anything. But we need to move this along. Well, the other problem is that there's no real quorum over here left. Well, I, mean, I can see everybody's over in the other meeting. And and, and, so, and then I will hold this meeting over as the chair, and then we will continue it tomorrow because we're going to uh, make some decisions about this. So, um, but we're, and if you don't want to vote for it, that's fine. But understand how, that the budget works just like our budget does. Right. No, I'm just saying we can't do previous role. Uh, that's and, I mind, mind, and I wouldn't mind. We can do previous role if we don't do quorum call. But if you want to do quorum call, we can. I, I will. Uh, uh, I will have a, a recess for this committee, and when I come back, it'll be tomorrow, and we'll just be doing this tomorrow. That, that's fine. I, okay. You know, I just there, there's, there's no quorum. I understand, I, and I want people. You know, I want everybody to be fair, and we get everything that we can. Um, I, okay. I wish Ms. Smart was going to be here. She has a medical procedure and she could answer a lot of these questions. And if we need to recess this uh, committee, we can do this. Can if you want to do a quorum call, because uh, nobody said objections to a previous role. But uh, um, if you want to do a quorum call, that's what we'll do. And I'll recess it and we'll start it back tomorrow. Well, you know, I know that a lot of people want to be in that public safety meeting. And I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, if we if we did the quorum call and we went till tomorrow, which I'm fine with, is is the uh, one two. Can the treasurer three, get that information to us? We okay. actually have a quorum. We have five people here. So, so let's find out right now, real quick. Is there is is there an objection? Can if we can, is there an objection to previous role? Uh, I would right now. I would object to it. But even you with the objection, we still have a quorum, and 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 so we still have a we can vote. Okay, but I I would okay, but I'll listen. But I would I, I would obviously okay, that's fine. Not and as I said before, anything that an older person wants, because I'm the sponsor of this bill, and I'm giving you my word that if it's something that they want that we can get before we would get to perfection, I would do that. But I would like to have this board bill voted on and voted out of committee. Okay, thank sir. you. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Vice Chairman, I'm sorry. 
Go ahead. Uh, the next person in line. Thank you both. Uh, the uh, Otto Woman Martin. No, it's Bosley. Is it? I mean, it's you and then it's uh, Boyd. Boyd, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Otto Woman Boyd, do you have any questions? You're muted. Otto Woman Boyd. I know I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I don't have any questions and congratulations, uh, Mr. Lane, for your appointment to the treasurer. But I don't have the questions. I just have a concern because we have a board meeting tomorrow, an automatic board meeting tomorrow because of the Juneteenth holiday. Yeah. So we can't, yeah, we can't move it till tomorrow. And then, uh, that's right. I, yeah, I don't have any well, questions. Right. I'm, I'm just like now, I'm, my mind is whirling because of all, all the right. meetings I'm, back I'm to covered. back. <laughs> well, we actually can have it. We would just have it at eight or nine right. o'clock in the morning before the board. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, okay. Alderman James Page. Um, um, Alderman, thank somebody. Thank you, uh, Alderman. Uh, I have uh, a question at this time. You're uh, welcome. Um, we have a back feed. to hear the balance of the speech. I think. That was Otto Woman Boy. She just okay. muted her phone. Uh, okay. The next person will be Otto Woman Martin, correct? Yes. Uh, Otto Woman Martin, do you have any questions? Otto Woman Martin, she may be in public safety. I don't think she's on. I don't see her. Otto uh, Woman Ann Schweitzer? No questions. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Lane. Thank you. Uh, Alder Woman uh, Tina. No question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, all right, so Alderman, I'm sorry, not Alderman, but um, a Treasurer Lane. Uh, I know you had some questions that you wanted to ask or you wanted to uh, make a statement. Uh, you have the floor to you. Okay, yes. And so I know there's a closing statement as well. Is this wrapped into one or is, or no? Uh, well, I just wanted to yield the floor back to you. I know you wanted to. Okay. Sure. Uh, so my question for make a comment. Uh, so yeah. So uh, what I wanted to clarify, our office is more than happy to provide uh, this body with the information that it requests. Um, the question for clarification, we can provide since we are talking about the parking budget. Um, and parking expenditure budget, we can definitely provide what percent of those parking revenues um, go to fund staff salaries at the Office of Financial Empowerment. My question for clarification, because there was another ask to see what part of the treasurer's budget went to that. And um, again, with my belief, inkling, inkling thought that that is not germane to the parking division revenues and expenditures, my question for clarification is, would that also need to be provided? Because that is what had been asked for. Um, yeah, yeah. so if, if there is any funds that are coming out of the, the city budget at all, even um, amongst the private uh, invest in, investments and fundraising, I think that's what Ottoman Board and uh, all the people are to, they want to see Sorry about that. I have calls that, that come in. I'll just decline that. Uh, but I think that's that's what maybe the committee is, is asking questions on in particular. Um, so if there are you know, any expenditures that are made out of the general that come to you from the general revenue that come uh, that you utilize for uh, employee positions, you know, regardless of how small or large, I think that's what uh, they're asking for. Is that uh, answer your question? It does. It does. Thank you. And again, that can be provided. My question was just more so to uh, relevance to this, these numbers here. Um, and, and I understand I, I, it, because of uh, the committee itself and what it is that it is involved in and everything, I think this all pertains and is germane to uh, the amounts of funding that we are utilizing out of general revenue, which still is you know, within this, uh, this, this budget. If it is germane, once again, to Board Bill 58, if there is any funding at all going into the Office of Empowerment. And I think that's, once again, what the committee is asking for, which would 
um, you know, if, if uh, should be simple enough. I don't, I don't think this is a hard board bill to pass at all. Understood. I just, you know, got to make sure that we get folks information this week. Understood and thank okay, you. Okay, uh, with, with that being said, uh, thank you. Is there any, any, any more questions that you may have or uh, comments you'd like to make, uh, Mr. Treasurer? I don't have any more questions, but I can give my closing remarks if it's time. Um, no, I don't want the closing remarks at this time because um, um, I, I do want to say that t today is only Tuesday, so we do not have a board meeting tomorrow, okay? So if this is getting pushed or if people uh, have questions, if we need to hold this over, thank you, Alderwoman from the 17th. Um, we can't do it. I'm not thinking, I'm not looking at my calendars. So I thought I was okay when I said that this is Tuesday, not Wednesday, okay? So our, our meeting is uh, Thursday. So if we, if we mm -hmm. cannot take a vote or if people have a problem with it and they need to have all of this stuff that they can't trust that I will get them uh, what they need, then we will be uh, uh, a, not adjourning, but just recessing and coming back. Um, I do want to say, um, just in a defense of the new treasurer, I don't think that he meant any harm to the alderman from the uh, 22nd Ward or and any disrespect. I've been dealing with him and he's a very disrespectful young man. I think that when we went over this budget, me, myself, I wasn't looking for, I was surprised at the question that the alderman from the 22nd Ward uh, asked because the parking commission is a separate entity. And that's what this is. This is about the parking commission and the operating and capital expenses of the parking commission. But I agree with all of them from the 22nd, you can ask any question that you wanna ask, okay? And I am always in favor of giving an older person more than less. And I made that clear, I think, to the treasurer and to his uh, staff in that that's why we added uh, uh, not only expenses, but revenue so that people could see everything. So um, I was writing down what the alderman wanted, and I was going to make sure that he got it. But this committee, I will, when I take the chair back, I will, if we want to make a decision not to pass this out and hold it, then we will recess and we'll get whatever any alder person needs. And then we'll be back here tomorrow. Okay, so just letting you know. Um, and um, so um, after that, I just wanted to say that if the, I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, um, you can go ahead and continue with the, uh, the hearing because I don't want things to to spill over from last year and the year before we got a new treasurer and I'm hoping that we can deal with him um, in a manner that is his, himself not from anything that we had from prior treasurers well I, I, I agree and I don't think this is a you know this this is a definitely new year for all of us and I think we'll be able to move forward as a collective and do some great things um so so with that you want to continue with the testimony from um uh, Frank he Williams wants to, and Rita he wants Gallagher. to wrap up, Mr. Vice okay. Chair, and then we can do the other ones. If he has, uh, are you finished? Uh, or will you, um, Treasurer Lane, will you be answering other questions if people have at questions? Yes, I can say. If people so have. can you just not wrap up and let your other people uh, testify? Can do. Okay, yes. Mr. Williamson is here. Um, Mr. Williamson? Thank you. He's gone now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Miss Rita Galladay. I hope, hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes, you did. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Rita Galladay. I'm the finance, I'm the county manager of the physical division of the parking division. Um, as it relates to our budget from FY21, we are pretty, from our projected budget, and our actual budget, we were down 43% um, from a revenue standpoint. And of course, it has to do a lot of the COVID we lost um, event revenue, which is again, that was the biggest portion of our revenue stream um, for FY21 fiscal year, I'm sorry. Um, and as well as that, um, losing all of that revenue, of course, on the expense side, our expenses didn't go down because we still had to pay our employees. Um, so that was on a plus side that we didn't have to lay off employees, even though our revenue streams were going down. Um, from a FY22 budget standpoint, we anticipating 
that our revenue will go back up since a lot of the employees are coming back into the garages and we're seeing larger events taking place. Um, so we will be getting that um, event revenue back for the 22 um, fiscal year. Um, from overall, from an expenditure standpoint, we are not going to fill seven FTE. So that's helping us, helping us on the expense side as well to offset some of those revenues that we're gonna lose within the first quarter. Um, Cause we're not, anticipating those revenue streams increasing until the October, um, October, some, some around October um, when some of our larger parkers from our corporation said they will be back into the office and paying their full amount of their parking revenues for that fiscal year. And those are some of the highlights um, going as far as with expenses are going, even though we're losing seven FTEs, reduction of FTEs. There was also increases in the healthcare and the employment and retirement. So it's more of an offset as far as we're decreasing FTEs, but our expenses for retirement and healthcare are going on up at the same time. And again, our increase in revenues, again, those are estimated anticipating that we do start getting a lot more of the larger venues back as far as concerts. Um, granted, the Cardinals are back at full capacity. So we're looking at our garages being back full during those Cardinals games um, for this year. Um, and again, hoping that our um, parkers do come back because that we do have some of our large parkers in our seventh and pine garage that are going to full work from home. So we're losing those parkers in that garage. Um, we were fortunate not to lose a lot of parkers in our justice garage because it's more, most of our parkers are either city employees or court employees which are back at 100%. That's are the highlights that I have as far as the budget are, are concerned. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, ma'am, thank you very much, Ms. Galladay. Uh, I'll go down the list here, members of the committee. Uh, Autumn and Boyd, do you have any questions? Autumn and Boyd, do you have any questions? You may not be with us. I don't have any questions. I was, I'm sorry, Autumn and Jeffrey Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, boy, you mean the. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chair. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. You might imagine when two police officers make. But I don't have any questions, though. <laughs> My apologies. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it together. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, I can hear Autumn and Boyd there going on. Uh, also, uh, Autumn and Corey, are, are you there? Do you have any questions? Alderwoman Martin, do you have any questions? Alderwoman Ann Schweitzer, I mean, Autumn and Alderwoman Boyd. He said no. Me this time. No, it's your turn. No, sir. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, Alder Woman and Swatsy. No questions, thanks. Thank you. And Alder Woman, um, Tina. No questions. Phil? No questions. Thank you, Ms. I'm sorry. I'm a I'm get this from today on. Auto woman peel. My apologies, ma'am. Uh, Auto <laughs> woman uh, ties chairman. I have no questions. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Ms. Galladay. Uh, we'll move uh, on down the list here to Mr. Lenny Freeman. Are you there, sir? Do you have any um, testimony here? Mr. Freeman, is he there? Um, I'm here, yes. No, I don't have anything at this time, um, unless somebody has a question for me. All right, uh, can you just uh, state your uh, position? Oh. Uh, what yeah, it is you do? I'm Leonard yeah. Freeman, I'm the parking administrator. 
think he just be a little bit more elaborate. Okay, my name is Leonard Freeman, and I am the parking administrator for the in city case, of St. Louis. Uh, committee members, not, not that we don't understand, but. All right, all right, and this is the parking for the city. Uh, do we have any questions here? I'll go down the list for the parking administrator. Um, uh, Autumn and Boyd, any questions? Autumn and Picaro. Auto Woman Martin. Auto Woman Boyd. No question. Thank you. Auto Woman Ann Schweitzer. No question. Auto Woman Peel. No question. Auto Woman Tides. No questions. All right. Um, I want to count how many uh, committee members we have left here to see if we have the votes to pass this out of committee. If not, then you know I will um, pass it back to you, Auto Woman Tides. If you want to hold to another day, we can, you know, be. I don't know if Alder Woman Boyd is here or not, or she's just uh, quiet. If she's here, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we have five, and we have okay. eight members. We still have one. Alder Woman Boyd, are you present? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm, I'm here. Am I free to close, Mr. My, Mr. Vice Chair? Yes, ma'am, you are free to close. I'm sorry. Okay, members, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the committee. Um, I sponsored this bill, and you all who know me know I'm very uh, thorough about making sure everything should be as it is, and that everybody is anything that is a, a question should be answered. Uh, in fact, uh, this bill looks a little bit different because I went back to the parking commission. They sent us over just uh, they sent us over both the uh, the expenses and the uh, uh, revenue, but the revenue was not included in the original board bill. I included it in the original board bill because, again, this is only about the parking commission and it's their appropriations. But I wanted the revenue included because the previous chair had asked about that and they were sent over, but they were not included. So they are in the board bill. Um, the previous chair, uh, Alderman Boyd, says that he has questions regarding um, the money that is. Uh, uh, being moved from for salary. He has questions about uh, what percentage of the treasurer's budget, budget goes to the, op, uh, the operation of the financial empower, empowerment. I want you to know, so my husband and I are supporters of that whole concept. So I, I want everybody to know that we donate at least a thousand dollars or more every year to the concept because I think it's such a great concept. Uh, we need financial empowerment. We need to teach children about how to manage their funds. We need to help children go to college. So I am a supporter. I want everybody to know that, okay, of my own money. I don't, I, I don't understand the alderman's uh, objection to uh, the Office of Financial Empowerment. I wish we had more things like that in other uh, parts of our board bill. We give lots of money to million and billionaires, but I've never understood why people were so concerned with giving a few dollars to tell children that, hey, this is your path to financial empowerment. I understand that more than any, because when I went to college, my parents, although they made us do savings, I never had a checking account. I never had a, a, a credit card. My mother didn't believe in that. So I got to college and I got those things and I had to really learn about managing my money. If it's something that we can do to teach our young people, I think it's worth every dime. I would, if, And I'm going to start giving more money to it because I think it's such a good thing. But um, getting off onto that uh, side uh, item is not what this budget is basically about. It's about a budget to be able to continue our parking operations so that our people can go back out because we are opening back up now. We are now having people who go to games and things like that. Uh, they are being very kind that they don't mention that in the last two years, we took $16 million from their budget. Um, and, I, and I voted against that. I thought that was irresponsible on the part of the Board of Aldermen, but we did it. And so that's made it very hard for them to operate. We cannot have a parking uh, uh, division and they can't even pay their people. They will be laying people off and then we'll be saying why we're not 
getting more income. I am asking this uh, committee if they would uh, pass this out with a due pass recommendation, board bill uh, 58 committee substitute. And then as I said before, I will promise this committee anything that Alderman Boyd or any of you all want that you feel like you're missing, um, that I will get that to you. And if it's something that's major, I will not pass the board bill. And that's what I give you as my word. And any of you all know, I will keep my word about things like that, but we need to move this along. And um, I really hope to come back here and see if there's a way we can put some of that money that we took away from them. In my 30 years in politics, I've never seen us take $16 million out of a person's budget, uh, out of a, uh, not a person, but a, a department's budget. And especially we took money out that was for this very thing that we're going through, which is the pandemic. And then they didn't have any money left over because we had taken it all. So I think it's an unfair um that we're doing that we're putting such a strict requirement on them and we ourselves have helped uh, cause some of the very financial woes they have. And it's not just about who the treasury is. There are people who are employed and go to work and need their jobs. And I wanna say this about uh, government, which is my way I look at government is that government is not always balanced. Government is to provide services. It is to so that your people are joined together to have a government and that they get their streets paved and, and all of these things. So uh, sometimes when people get really hard about it's you can't put this money in this. I think we missed the whole point of what government is, and I hope we'll get back to it. And I hope we'll be this strict when we are telling billionaires uh, that they can have every kind of all the time I've been here. I've never heard us say no to a billionaire or a millionaire about a stadium, but we worry about a couple of hundred thousand dollars about children and financial empowerment. And I would ask for your favorable consideration of board bill 58 committee substitute. Thank you, Otto. Thank you, Otto. I just want to point out to the committee uh, members today, we still have time uh, next week and the forthcoming weeks to get the information that was asked for, for us to make an educated decision on uh, what will be the final vote there. So just, um, you know, as we ask for that information, there's still plenty of time for us to get it. Um, and I you know, thank you for all the members, uh, the people who uh, testified today. So with that, uh, I asked for, I will entertain a motion uh, to pass out board bill 58 with a due pass recommendation. Becomes a, a Second. Place, a problem. Those individuals probably won't make fines. You need 20 sales. I'm sorry, we, uh, can you repeat that? I made a motion to pass out, pass out board bill 58 with a due pass recommendation. Second. Thank you. Is that a second? Uh, so Thank you. Second. 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 I'm sorry. Yes, can we, um, thank you. I, I will make a motion. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll entertain a motion for us to pass board bill 58 committee substitute out with the due pass recommendation. I make a motion to board 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 substitute with the due pass recommendation. Second. All right, moved by Alderwoman Woman Schweitzer, seconded by Alderwoman Woman Boyd. Um, please call roll. Madam Chair, please call roll. Point of order, um, second, when uh, the older woman votes, we need to see her face, okay? It's like being on the floor, okay? Second floor. I knew you was going to say that. <laughs> Even if it's against me, you know I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> second. <laughs> Alderman Boyd. That's right. That's right. Alderman Vaquara. Uh, up to about a year. But All right, so let's, let's try this one more time. Oh, we're doing so, it. We're, uh, we're in the is? vote. Okay. We're, we're, we're fine. Okay. I'm the woman boy. Ah. Yeah, traditionally, um, I'm the, I'm the woman Martin. I'm the woman Schweitzer. Aye. I'm the woman Peel. <laughs> Now vote. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> thank you. I, I. Mr. Woman Sias. Aye. Five I vote. By your thank vote. Thank you, Madam Clerk. By your vote, we sustain a motion.
and we have passed our board bill 58 committee substitute with a uh, due pass recommendation. Uh, with that, it will pass the floor back or the chairmanship back to Ottawa. No, you're not. No, no you're not. No. Oh, you got another one? Oh, no, I have another board bill. So I, I really do want to ask the committee. Um, I'm sorry, I, uh, Treasurer Lane, we didn't let you close, but you got a better outcome, okay? <laughs> it got passed out. And you. I will get with you about whatever the older people on this board, uh, this committee wants, we'll get it to them. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, I need to ask this committee. So we've been going for a long time. Um, so I do want to do street calming, but if it's uh, running too long for you, we can either uh, recess and come back tomorrow. We can continue or we can hold it over to next week. Um, um, so whatever is the committee's uh, uh, thought on this, I, I'm open to hearing it. I would say if this is the street common, let's, we got a quorum on this. Let's, that's uh, that's not what <laughs> <laughs> like we can, uh, Okay. That's, that's a good one. There. All righty. <laughs> Anybody else? Right, let's, we'll, we'll go down. Let me see. Is, is it time so we gotta, you? we gotta meet again next week. Twenty years ago, either because we are gonna meet next week because there's some other bills, and, and I didn't so want to put all the bills on. We, so we, I, we didn't know how long it was gonna take. As you can see, it took longer than when you have all these people. We don't do real enforcement. All these people that can testify. Yeah, that takes a long time. Yeah. Okay. So we are gonna have a meeting next week. Okay. All right. Is it all right if we go ahead and just do the, the street comment or do, the, uh, is it the committee's will that we own and, and then down? Process we'll we'll do whatever. Sure I, you, I, I respect my committees and you guys are great. So okay. um, is this, uh, I'm, I'm still on two committees, so. Um, you know, nobody really communicates with the Would anybody be uh, objecting to us continuing until tomorrow sometimes? So, you know, we have to find out what's going on. Which is really important. Okay. Hey, that's the relationship. Okay. If we're going to do this next week. So, it's my understanding mm -hmm. that um, the MSI is going to be closed, but not real. Does that mm -hmm. seem to be here to record this? Auto Woman Boyd, can you mute your phone, please? Can you explain? My phone is muted. Yeah. Somebody we can hear. Somebody is on the committee meeting. <laughs> okay, there it is. It's, gone. it's not me. <laughs> if, 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 if we need to meet at what eleven o'clock on Tuesday, uh, anyways, with the other bills, I prefer that it happens then. I would have I have meetings tomorrow at this time, so I prefer next what, Tuesday. So when is our last meeting? Is it in July? It is July the sixteenth. Okay, so we have time. So okay. I, I'm 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 okay if you know because this is kind of long, and I didn't know how much, and I was trying to limit how much we put on there. So this uh, we're gonna have to look at the rule about uh, testimony at every single thing. I mean, it's okay. a good rule, but we need to fine tune it. I think. Agreed. Okay, so okay, I'm taking back over, Mr. Chair. I'm uh, Mr. Vice Chairman. Okay, so it's the Thank as you. I understand, it's the will of the committee that we've uh, gone pretty long, and so we'll come back next Tuesday with these the board bills that stayed on the uh, uh, on the agenda, and then we'll add a couple of more. Is that okay with the committee? I, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. I, I I'd entertain a motion that we adjourn uh, the Streets Committee. I move that we adjourn the Streets Committee. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Have a good day.